The Rapid Chess Championship is brought to you by Coinbase. Whether you're looking to make your first crypto purchase or you're an experienced trader, Coinbase has you covered. You can earn crypto by learning about crypto at Coinbase.com. Explore DeFi and Web3 with your Coinbase wallet. Get exclusive rewards when you spend with your Coinbase card and much, much more. Learn more at Coinbase.com slash chess and get $10 in Bitcoin when you sign up and verify your account. Check them out. Use the command sponsor or command Coinbase today and go to Coinbase.com to get that Bitcoin, baby. Welcome everyone to Chess.com's Rapid Chess Championship. I'm Anna Rudolph and I'm thrilled to be here with the one and only GM Candy. FIDA master at the moment, but definitely I am, if not GM, <laughs> in like two months. James, <laughs> welcome to the show. What's up, Anna? What's going on, chat? Look, today is the finals, right? Or of course, the knockout portion. It's time to work, right? It's going to be some fun and we got some big matches today. So what's the format, Anna? What do we have? It's a very exciting format. We have the top eight players from yesterday's tournament qualifying to today's knockout. The time control is slightly different. We do have two second increments in comparison to yesterday's, which was just 10 minutes, no increment. And the higher seed starts with the white pieces. Every match, James, is a one-game match. Have you ever heard anything like this? How no, crazy is that? That doesn't even make any sense to me. Why would we <laughs> play just one game, right? That's, of course, molding for everybody on the internet when you don't get your rematch right and it's <laughs> definitely a lot and it's money on the line here and it's one you only got one shot so of course you got to make it count yeah one shot and if that one game is a draw then we'll have a tiebreaker as you guys can see first a blitz and in case of another tiebreaker tiebreaker of the tiebreaker bullet and even armageddon lots of prices at stake james this is just what we have for the weekly prices and of course everyone is also playing for the overall grand prix points because this is the penultimate week of the rapid championship and uh, we shall figure out who will be the top 12 to make it to the overall final final big show yeah absolutely of course as you see at the bottom there so you got norbeck uh you got um, jose martinez part and one that i noticed yesterday was jan jan mr yeah. world championship challenger right at the bottom down there trying to make it up to the top now of course there is a lot of chess still to be played in, in the upcoming weeks but at the same time i think a lot of those guys are going to make it up um to the top maybe knocking out a few at the bottom but everybody has to play their greatest chess for you to have any kind of chance very true. And uh, Mr. World Championship Challenger, uh, Yanne Pameshi, as you mentioned, is not even going to be here today because yesterday in the penultimate round, Mr. Hans Niemann won his game against Jan and made Jan's chances basically be zero for this weekend. He'll have to come back next weekend to try to get the remaining Grand Prix points. But for now, Yanne Pameshi would not be qualifying certainly somewhat thanks to hans yeah hans was going off hans actually came out of nowhere in fact um where uh, we were he, i think he took an l maybe in the first round or a draw something like that but we didn't think that he would be first as he did yesterday he actually kind of went off out of nowhere the last few games and made stuff count winning drawn positions like magnus type things and actually having a great run i think jeffrey did the same thing also vukar is no one to play around with now this is only one game so I think it could go either way. Vukar is very strong. He's been able to knock out. I've seen he's he's beaten in Arena Kings. He's beaten Nakamura before. He's beaten all the top dogs. Naradinsky, right? But it depends on uh, this one game right here. As you see him on the screen, those boys look ready. Exactly. One game and only one game. Uh, Hans is very focused on, I guess, making sure that his setup is going all right. I was really wondering if, if he streamed yesterday. And I asked you, James, before we went live, and uh, he, he had an answer for you in the chat. Is that correct? Yeah, he said uh, he came in and he subbed and he was like, yeah, I don't do that anymore, right? Basically, he's just saying, look, I don't even stream. He streams maybe once a month, if you catch him, right? Because he does spend 10 hours a day, from what I remember, actually studying chess, right? So him and Hikaru are big inspirations of mine for that grind. But of course, uh, he, it's like, I don't have time. I go to sleep, I eat, I study. That's it. No more streaming for Hans. Yeah. It seems it's only Hikaru who, who can keep up with both. I still don't understand how he does it. It feels like he's got 48 hours a day and not 24. That's true. Uh, but Hans is our number one seed today, which means that he will have the white pieces against Vulgar Rasulov in his game that's just about to start. Shout out to Grandmaster Jospan, by the way, who is with us in the Twitch chat. And we Good are rooting you. for you, Jospan, to What's make up, it Jospen? to the double 12. Of course, even if Jospan 
is now uh, playing this very match. But thank you so much for being with us in the chat. That's right. He's very close to, uh, to actually making it, right? He's, he's, she's close. Come on, Jose. You got it, big fella. And the game is off. Here we go. Let's see what we start with. Big Hans here. One game. Only one. One game. One game. Hans with the white pieces. E4. E5. All right. Cool, cool. Little Italian An game. Italian. Yeah, it's one of the most popular openings. D3 media route. and bishop e7. Yeah, the slow route here. Rookie one, very quick. Yesterday there was no increment. So you have to play actually your best best because uh you know you can't make blunders and and, and yesterday you've seen a lot of flagging, right? So today there's not gonna be any flagging really with that two-second increment. These guys are professionals here, so. King H8 yeah, out of the way. very true. That it's a big difference to finally have some increment, and flagging is not really a case. Yeah. This King H8, Knight G8 is That's cute. <laughs> yeah, that. cute is one way to say. <laughs> yes, <laughs> James. Um, but yeah, it makes it, it looks like it. It's nonsense, but actually, it makes a lot of sense because Black is pushing F5 next move, and then the Knight will hop back to F6. Wow, King's Indian style in a way with the, with the Bishop on E7, and you see, it has Hans thinking like, "What is that?" Like, I haven't seen that one before. Definitely interested in uh, the next move. Let me turn the engine off. I don't want any moves given to me here after F5. So F5 is coming. So what? What do we do? <laughs> I mean, we have Knight D5. We have H3. I don't know about that. H3 seems. Seems right somehow. G4 is too aggressive. We need to develop our pieces too, though. Yeah, white still yet to develop the queen side. Black too, but black is waiting with the development of the c8 bishop and is just focusing on pushing f5 and trying to gain space and attack on the king side, as you mentioned, similarly to the king's Indian defense. Yeah, I do like black's options with f5 and f4 here. Of course, Han's still thinking. This is definitely a long think here, trying to figure out what plan to go with. He goes with d4. Yeah, logical that against a, a flank attack, he's already Breaking attacking, counter-attacking in the center, indeed, Beautiful. with the breakthrough. F5, anyway, I don't care about he that. He doesn't care. That's Wait a ruthless a second. man. That's the Valiant Chamber doesn't quite agree with Wooger's I, wow. bravery, but I like it. <laughs> I do like it too as well. I'm trying to figure out what he does. Okay, Pawn takes E5. Are we trading queens or not is the question. You know, I think Hans Hans been trading queens a lot lately. I'm not even gonna lie. Every game I think I saw in Hans yesterday, the queens were off the board. So he I likes think his end Yeah, I think there's a high probability of queen takes d8 and bishop g5, something in in that in that uh, realm. Maybe even knight to d5 to follow, and or, or before, and then bishop g5 somehow. And Vulgar is really focused in this moment, as if it was still preparation or just double checking his calculation. He takes on e4, not on e5. Mm -hmm. Taking on e4, very interesting. Maybe knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. Nothing wrong with this. I wonder if he'll go bishop g4. That's I was much. gonna ask you if you think that he's ready to sacrifice that pawn and just right. go for the initiative. That's what it feels like. It does yeah. feel very, very, and that's a good move because of knight takes e5 being there. And in h3, I take and then, so you may have to go bishop e2 there after knight takes c4. Mm -hmm. What is going on? Knight takes c4, bishop g4, bishop e2, and I guess I just take. Maybe even with the pawn, because now if queen takes the a, you take back with the rook. Yeah, nice you're bringing the move. other rook. This is ridiculous. <laughs> That's a move for you there. But yeah. what do we do? At the same time, our evaluation bar is so not impressed, claiming oh, quite a lot of advantage for <laughs> Your white. garbage. Black is playing <laughs> like Garbo right now. According to the engine, 2.2 .2 advantage, two pawns up. That's and crazy. It doesn't even feel that way at all, honestly. Yeah. Takes, maybe we take here first. Takes, takes, takes. Queen Bishop F1. What is this? That's just nuts. Let's see. There's a turn lot to one. calculate here. See. And yeah, that's why Hans is taking okay. so long uh, because it's a mess. So the engine gives Knight takes E4, Bishop G4 is the move, but we just take on D6 and then play Bishop E2 and we're up a pawn. That's it. Oh, it's a clean, simple way. Clean, simple but way. But this is the line though. Knight takes E4, yeah. Bishop G4 is it. That's the kind of line, though, James, that is so hard to actually play with our right. human brains and emotions because right. it is to be on the defensive side um, at least for the next couple of moves and to be sure that it's okay there to be on the defensive. Yeah, as you see, Hans is still thinking down to almost three minutes here. Of course, the two-second increment does help us a lot, but it is a time deficit, and we do need to make up for it, especially in this sharp position here. 
See how Hans is uh, leaning up, calculating. Wukar in the zone. So he it definitely is calculating knight takes e4. Yeah, it, it's it's a deep, deep uh, thinking moment. I wonder how many more seconds or minutes he will spend on this uh, very critical decision. What other moves do you think he's even considering? Or is it simply just about knight e4? What e4. happens after rook e4? Yeah, definitely rook e4 is another idea. And then maybe a bishop f5, you just go back, right? Maybe there, but definitely taking this pawn. And I think this one just does not work for some reason. It just doesn't feel like this works. But yeah, definitely rook takes or knight takes. Definitely suspicious. So those are the two main options. Other moves and don't make is. sense. And he ends up playing knight takes e4, which is the best move. And it's on the board. So now over to Vugar. I was expecting bishop g4 quickly. Instantly. Instantly. Yeah. It's right. gotta be the way, right? That's Instant. gotta be. Yeah, Bishop G four, right, was uh definitely a move you wanted to play, but after just taking on D six and Bishop B two, if Hans finds that he's just up upon, nothing's going on, and we're gonna definitely even bully this one. That's weak, isolated. It's not great, as the engine is saying. White is just up two pawns. Yeah, uh, it it feels like. The engine has never really believed in this setup. In this like, wow. <laughs> Was like, questioning wow, it from the start. Although this king h8 knight g8 is is a, a thematic way of breaking through with f5. I wonder what Thinking. else is we are considering. Hans takes e5, but that's isolated. I mean, Hans is going to eat that alive, right? This would be terrible. Yeah. Knight takes e5, probably the same. We would definitely trade queens. He loves the trade queens. We move the knight. This pawn's again isolated. Bishop g4. It's played. Now, he will he take on d6? It. Taking on d6 is a clear advantage. And uh, I don't think Hans is going to miss that one, believe it or not. So he also has e6, to though. Take... I like this move, too. E6. e6 is another mm -hmm. one. Yeah, he takes. There it is. Of course. And the he calculated it already it. before knight takes e4, so he immediately takes on d6 as well. That's it. That's it. So... This is a, a clean pawn here, and we can come back with bishop to e2. Now, bishop takes f3. I think we take on e7 first. Yeah, this got to be. Both f3. queens are That's hanging. So cool. What a position. So for Vulgar, there aren't too many options either. He has to take this way. Bishop takes would be maybe, well, I mean, maybe you could take with the bishop. Because I, I don't like this after knight takes. I have to take with the pawn. And there's maybe even queen h4 mm -hmm. there somehow. No. This is annoying, actually, if, if bishop takes. Maybe we just go back to e2 and just say we're up to pawn. And shield yeah. and consolidate. Mm-hmm. It does feel like bishop e2 is a key move because bishop takes f3 is a big threat once the bishop on e7 is not hanging. All right, so she takes d6 and bishop to e2. Rukar is getting closer on time to Hans. In trouble. And you look at him in his own <laughs> hand. You see, his, that is a thinker, right? That man <laughs> in his own. He's only coming closer and closer to the webcam. Hey, hold on. I think there's a, there's a, like a, where is this? I'm putting it in a chat. This is what it looks like. <laughs> That's Vukar right there. <laughs> that is exactly him. It looks like he made that emo. <laughs> Honestly, he could be twins with the <laughs> the gentleman from the emote. Wow. He in his own man. Yeah, Hans, Hans looks is comfortable, just chilling. calm, chewing yeah. gum. Yeah, he's uh he's comfortable. So he he did spend quite a lot of time earlier, but it was just to make sure that he uh, he calculated well all this mess that this middle game is, and now he is confidently playing out the moves that he already had analyzed. Sitting back and chilling, and realize, hey, this is good. I'm good. The longer and especially especially in this time token control as well, you do need to think on your opponent's time. So we may see some quick moves from Hans depending on what uh, Bugar plays. He takes d6, bishop takes. I mean, you only have a few options here. Bishop takes f3 is out of the question. So you're either going to take with the pawn or the bishop, which just gives white a clear advantage again with the pawn. Yeah. And in both cases, we're expecting bishop e2 by Hans as a response to bishop takes or c takes d6, right? That's right. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Takes with a pawn. I'm guessing that, instant. yeah, he didn't like that after bishop takes d6, bishop e2, the bishop was going to be captured unless he moves it. So he, he ends up taking with the pawn, even though it's an isolated pawn and he's down a pawn already. Yeah, and bishop to e2 is uh, very good now. Now we can just move the knight and move it uh, to maybe even g5. That's aggressive. But I mean, that's me anyway. I just always like to play aggressive moves. Knight g5 feels great. d5, tagging the knight animal. Yeah, attacking the knight and also creating um, space on d6 again for either the bishop or the queen or both pieces. If if they could appear on the diagonal queen bishop battery, I know I'm dreaming, but that would be right. a made threat on h2 in a few right. moves. <laughs> oh man, and where does the knight go? G3 or c3? D2, D2, okay. D2. All right. I, wow. I would not have guessed wow. that square. This feels yeah. a bit awkward. Strange. Very strange, but I like the unconventional method. Hans is known for the unconventional type True. of method of chess in a way. So knight d to e2 yeah. and knight and f1 honestly, and knight d3. Beautiful. Yeah. Both the pawns. Knight f6. Yeah, now I that you have that drawn those there. lines, it does make sense that he wants that knight on f1. What, wait, has he already played knight b3? Yeah, he already put it here. He's like, ah, in an isolated pawn way. Put it on d4. <laughs> That's the ISO pawn, the critical. Yeah, this yeah. is how you play against the isolated pawn. And not only isolated, but I'm up a pawn, right? So I'm yes. playing against an isolated pawn. And I'm up a pawn. So this is a clear, clear advantage. But these black, these uh these pieces are active. They are very active, in fact. Maybe I just yeah. go C three and like knight d four, maybe queen d three. I don't have to like, I don't have to rush anything here, says Hans. Maybe though, that is kind of annoying. <laughs> like, hold on. He's aiming at me, right? Yes, and even though black is down a pawn, but the pawn that's missing is the F pawn. So the rook's file is open because of that pawn not being on the board. And if queen takes d5, Anna, what happens? Oof, I don't know. We should ask our viewers. What I, I think if they queen could takes help D5, us. Chat? Can anyone tell me what happens on um, queen takes d5? Bishop takes h2, and what do you do? You resign. That's what you do there. <laughs> GG, start a new game. So it doesn't happen, obviously. H3. H3. So how can we keep some of this tension, the pressure on on the king's side? It's got to move the bishop. Okay. And bishop h5. Yeah, it definitely feels like taking on f3 will not lead to anywhere for black. Oh, he grabbed! Oh my goodness! Oh. What? <laughs> Sacrificing the bishop for h3? Excuse bishop h3! Me. Oh my what? goodness! This man is what? is a savage. He don't and care about nodding. nobody. It's oh, like man. as if he had some music going on, or it's just you know to boost Whoa. your own confidence a bit. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He doesn't care. That is a scary man. Stay far away from this man. If he tags sacrificing pieces like this. Now we need to calculate everything. What if we just take the pawn though? Now we can just nab this boy, right? What are you doing? Yeah, because queen g6 is only a uh, check. That's a check, huh? I'm about to wait. Knight h4 is on, on pre. Oh, here's knight g3. There are a lot of tactics here still. Yeah, he's got to be careful, of course. Vulgar didn't just sacrifice a bishop uh, out of serendipity or just like, uh, <laughs> let's roll the dice. Although it feels like rolling the dice to be Oh, fair, yeah, but... he rolled on the <laughs> dice. And definitely, he's like, I mean, he's going all in. Queen takes this queen g6. Maybe I just go king h1, though. King h1 steps out of the rook file here. I mean, there's definitely some mm -hmm. nasty threats. And I have knight h4 on pre with queen takes e4 being the idea after uh, attacking the queen. Queen hits short on spaces, but you maybe have queen e8 there somehow. This knight bishop on e3 is such an important defender so that right. the f2 pawn is never hanging and the bishop on e2 is holding you know on to that f3 knight. What yeah. about knight g5, Anna? Knight g5. Oh, not even moving the king. Yeah, and then if rook e8, I play bishop d3. With the I idea like of, your uh, idea. Bishop takes yeah. E4, yeah. But then there's knight yeah. before there, but bishop takes, queen takes. Yeah, I still win. I think knight g5 might be a move. Oh, there's rook f5. What a move. And then queen takes, and then rook takes g5. He loses the queen. Oh, my. There are so many tactics oh here. Oh, my. So maybe knight g5 is active, and, and as good as it seems, it might not be the best move. Nice. King h1. 
Hans needs to be careful here. He's up for peace. <laughs> Hold on. I told you this man, Vukar, is scary. This is a very scary man. Stay far away from this man. <laughs> man. Yo, that's nuts. Okay, so I might like King H1. What's wrong with King H1? I don't really know. Maybe knight e7 and queen h5. But Hans is definitely thinking, and he's getting lower on time. We do have the two second increment. He plays king h1 and it goes to equal. Oh my oh, goodness. King h1 me. is not a move. It dropped, it dropped so this? much. It's almost it's like equal. all the advantage is gone with a piece up on the board. <laughs> Okay, I gotta go back. I gotta see what did the engine want. So, what was the move then? The move here that makes it. Is it knight g5 um, or king f4? It is knight g5. You it were is. right, James. It is, but but the, here's the line. Here's the line that nobody's gonna do. Here's the move, Anna. Queen takes a five, and it after uh... takes you by bishop d3. You have lost your absolute if you oh think I'm about to play this. My. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> you have my. lost your marbles, my guy. Yeah, this is not happening. So okay, that's not happening. I... That was the line though. I think we can understand why Hans didn't Maya, say it. Maya, Who Maya could even Maya. see that? Queen takes f5 was the wow. right move there. Yeah. He plays knight Goodness h4, me. a counter, and he gets the pawn back. Man, I mean, insane. I don't know what's going to happen now. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. Yeah, this is such a mess now. Mm -hmm. And according to the evaluation bar, it's a very good mess for black. Because imagine if it gives almost equality with a piece down in a practical game that's a that very dangerous a situation yeah. hey i feel great right and i feel better says vukar here time yeah. is uh i'm up a little bit of time right you know he's letting me get the piece back because right now i can just take the queen and get the piece back which yeah. should be like the only thing i mean you don't really have i mean maybe he is thinking outside the box obviously but Knight takes d5, I get the piece back. Yeah, I get a double pawn, but I get the piece back. There's f2s hanging. Queen e8, what a savage. What a he savage. He doesn't want the piece back. don't even want the back. piece back. I'm telling I don't want to play this man ever. I never want to play him. <laughs> I don't ever want to play Vukar. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to play him. This is very ridiculous. Queen h5. And then g6 and knight takes. Yeah. Jocelyn, rook be. f5, bishop, f, bishop h5. Well, let me see. Where is that at? Uh, Jocelyn always got the nasty lines, right? Where was this at? Oh, yeah, you tell me here. Rook f5. This is h5. Oh, nice was it the 9g5 line with rook f5 that we were talking about? Or yeah, it might have been that one. H5. Oh, with bishop h5 there. Man, that is nasty, Jocelyn. That could have worked, I think. Bishop h5, rook g5, queen g5, queen g5, bishop g5. There's a lot of yeah, stuff going to g5 crazy there. crazy stuff. We'll and know, it's H5, also we'll crazy that yeah. Vugar just doesn't care about the queen trade offer he says i've got the knight C2. fork got a knight fork making it very very weird here is it he's going to be up an exchange there or a two for one at least if we take and move the rook this is so complicated right now i mean there's stuff very. what is this right this hanging in the end my knight over here why my uh, fork but i'm up material though like i don't know this is very scary especially in the time control that we have here so he liquidates there we're going to be still up a piece but not for much. Bishop b5 hitting the rook. He's going to take and one of these rooks eventually. Again, the engine just didn't agree with some of the moves because it's back to complete equality. Equal. Equal. Equals here. Equals. Oh my, where shall the rook go? It's not that simple. You know, man, this is nuts. The engine is so crazy. It says knight takes e3. I'm not even, I don't even know what's going on anymore. What? Just take the bishop. I don't even know what's going on here. I don't, I don't even know. What What if I take the rook? I just got to see it, oh right? Knight of two. Are we getting mated? Oh, my no goodness. No way. Gross. This is a family channel. Rick here and then hitting like sheesh. Oh, my what? goodness. What? And no one disgusting. can stop rook h2? Yeah, you have to play knight of three and then rook takes f3 and then everything is like nuts. There's not enough time for all of this. Ten minutes and two no, second increment here. Imagine if he plays it. Imagine. Yeah. The mad lad. If he if he plays this, right, he has a very good chance of taking the whole thing today. And it feels like he's seeing something that's that's a very forcing line because his his eyes suddenly like <laughs> went Look even him, wider right? and then like, oh, there's something, you there's know, so that much. kind of moment. Right. Right, there's so much here. There's so oh, so much to look at. Yeah, rookie five actually, Akila in the chat. I do see rookie five absolutely is a natural move as well. Just going for whatever, and then we're gonna grab one of the rooks out of there. So it's playable. 
two. And yeah. Mahan's under a minute, though. Two-second increment. But Han's under a minute. Under a minute, and it's still such a dangerous position. There are no queens on the board, and yet his king could still be checkmated. Right. Here we go. All right. There's so much to calculate, and whether yeah. to keep that knight fork on, or if he takes on a1 and the b3 knight is hanging, but his own rook is hanging too. And the engine doesn't want to take any of that. The engine just wants to take the bishop on e3 because that's yeah. the one that's guarding f2. Let me see, actually. What's the lines? The number one line is 93. Number two is rookie five. And number three mm. is taking on a1. Yeah, they all seem very yeah. logical. Knight takes e3 seems people. the the most difficult to find. What happened? There were Wait, moves. What? what? Oh, what happened? Have they I played was wondering. Yeah, they played some moves. It's just we just had to refresh somehow. So oh. he played rookie five, bishop d4, knight takes takes knight takes f2 king g2 here's the game this is the live rook g1 knight f3 oh it's God. got what is this what <laughs> is going on got here. oh my I goodness no okay you well, know we what? are in bullet territory with two second position. increment and two knights and a bishop with two pawns i don't know who am i gonna take i'm gonna take black here i'm gonna take black here i still understand how they even got into this end game, but we don't have time to address all the mess that happened earlier. It is two minor pieces fighting against a rook and two pawns, but the two pawns are doubled. Wow. 96. And bishop c5, bishop f2 with rook g3 check. Where do we Pons go? Pawns is now? threatening checkmate with knight f7. <laughs> <laughs> How is that even possible? <laughs> idea what's this how did they get here knight f7 you have to be kidding me knight f7 knight h6 draw nah could i mean he be. could take it yeah. he's probably gonna take it oh he's gonna take the draw it, I think. yeah yeah that's it yeah because if he rep. moves the knight there's rookie three and all sorts of nasty things could still happen so wow. Hans takes the draw Vugar cannot believe it he Ooh. feels that he had more than a draw yeah well, and we go right that's good into... news for us. Yeah, it's good fact... news for us, James, because it means a tiebreaker, a blitz game, three plus two. That's right. Three plus two here. We're, uh, I think Hans is the favorite there in the blitz matchup, actually. You think because of the time control? Definitely. Definitely because mm. of the time control. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In terms of what happened in the game, though, I felt like Wugar really... He went for this such a bold and crazy bishop sacrifice and it almost actually worked out for yeah. him, the peace yeah. sacrifice yeah what a game what a game from that man i mean uh Bukhar is very <laughs> scary but now hans i think is feeling well, all right cool i got away there let's shake that off and then uh, now we have uh, less time but we know how we do in blitz he's always a favorite yeah, and the problem is Wugger is shaking his head, but I don't think he's shaking his head about his castle king side. He's shaking his head because of the previous game. And it's <laughs> so hard when you have it in your, the back of your mind that you had yeah. some missed chances. So he, he doesn't have a break where he could just go out, take some fresh air, you know, whatever works for in between games. There is no break, so he has to just forget about it somehow and start, start a new page. Absolutely. And as you see, you have to get it. You have to literally forget about, like you say, uh, he, Hikaru says, um, he says, uh, you have to have short term memory loss with this type of stuff, right? <laughs> because like you go into it with the same, like, oh man, I just should have won that game. You're not even really thinking, you you blunder. Right? Yeah. You blunder. What is Hans drinking? Is that water? That better be water. That better yeah, be water. I think it's water. It looks like water. water, water bottle there. <laughs> Look at a shiny water bottle. Okay. And he's right. so chill, as if nothing happened. He almost got checkmated with a piece of, but <laughs> <laughs> he's the opposite of Vugar. Vugar really seems still I under don't... the impact of that game, and Hans right. is just like, you know, <laughs> it's another Man, chill it's game. Nothing. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm sure. This gum is good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. What, what right. flavor? This gum is good, dog. I'm drinking, <laughs> sipping the water, relaxed. It's almost as if he could hear you because he, he had like a bit of a smile on his face. <laughs> right, nodding, man. He's having a good time, man. Hans is a vibe. And Booger is struggling. Actually, the position too got a little worse for him, but I feel like it was it was the emotional side of mm -hmm. the previous game. Psychologically, he was not ready to start a new game. 
Yeah, in, in fact, whoa, that was not a good move to the engine, but this feels this feels good from Hans. I mean, everything's active. We now get rid of the light square bishop here, right? And we have a good position. I think uh, the rook controls the c file. Queen is active. We could also start uh, an attack on the queen side. Maybe even the king though. F five, F four, G five, F three is coming. You got the weakness on the uh, light squares now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Okay. Trade and it's a symmetrical position, so it makes sense that the bar is showing an equal, a roughly equal evaluation. Yet it is black who's got the somewhat more active pieces, and also I think Hans is on a psychological level in a better place right now in the Definitely. match. Definitely, yeah, he's still shaking his head. You see that? Still shaking yeah, his head. Like, bro, we in like two minutes into the next game, right? And he's still shaking his head. Yeah. Right over that game there. You got to get it. You got to get over that. Right. And we have to, we got to focus on this one where it seems yeah. he's not focused as much on this no. game. No, no. It, it almost feels like he's still calculating what could have happened in the previous game. Cause that's yeah. what, that's what his facial expression is like. Yeah, absolutely. Queen D3. Now I'm getting into the position, but I mean, I mean, I have, I have play two. Rook C7. He goes Queen D1. Doesn't want any of that. Uh, the pawn is staying on D4. But no, F7. Interesting. I wonder if Rook C7 could have been played. Obviously, Han saw that. I wonder what he had for it. Queen to D1. It's a bit passive to have to come back with the queen, but he was Absolutely. worried about the activity of Hans's right. pieces. Right. And Hans is considering whether to go for the queen trade or not. You said that he traded his queens yesterday in almost every game. Right. After almost every game. <laughs> Oh, there he is. Like, for it. Almost every game it's he so did this. Predictable. <laughs> right. He traded like every game he had queens off the board. So knight takes. Oh, wow. Just offering a rook end game with Man, a pawn down. Oh, sweet boy. That is some sweet stuff. I mean, he'd be fine as some moves. He finds some moves. So if B6, does he want to play B4 as well to get that oh, pawn back? Oh, my goodness. B4. Right. That's really strong there. Really strong. Absolutely. Wow, this seems to equalize fully. In case of a draw, we're going to get even more chess between these two because in case of a draw, we need a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker, a bullet game. One minute, one second increment would be the time control. And in that game, Hans will have the white pieces again. So he'll be they be alternating, uh, obviously, the colors for each game. And I think uh, they have the, uh, it's Armageddon in the next one if they draw. Yeah, if the blood is a draw, then Armageddon. Oh, no. They draw. Yeah, three. He's going to take the piece when he's ready. Hans with 40 seconds. <laughs> Maybe he's man. too chill. Right. Hey, man. Hey, bro. Hey, and the bro. bullet, that will not work, but I think he'll <laughs> speed up. Yeah, he's going to speed up, definitely. Got to speed it up. I don't know. It feels like this pawn's a little loose. Oh, Hans, don't show don't us your chewing. No, we were not that curious about it. No. <laughs> No. Hey guys, here's my gum. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is a bit of an oversharing aspect. I feel like I don't think we wanted to actually physically see the yeah, gum. He, yeah, yeah, he's uh showing us his gum, here, guys. <laughs> don't try to sit home. Don't try to sit home. Rook takes c5, rook takes pawn takes, push king up, and I'm winning. I think, yeah. So he calculated the, the king and pawn end game too, obviously, before taking on c5 with the rook. 20 Hans is like, whoa, bro. Look, <laughs> hey, yo, you got to move, bro. You got to move. You got to move, my guy. Wow. Wow. I mean, wow. Does yeah, he make see sure we refresh. Did I refresh it? Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is this wow. low on time and he's cool as a cucumber. He calculated all this. Uh, that's what he was calculating. Ah. And it's just a draw. Think, right? well, that's, Wait, that's quite here, a here. that's quite something to calculate <laughs> yeah, how many exactly. moves it takes to capture the pawn and then push and takes f4 one two three four five six one two three four five six yeah we clean at the same time but there's uh i mean I'm, i got these though like i have these Queen, queen, and yeah. where is the draw? Okay, maybe it is, obviously, but 
Yeah, he takes the pawn. Okay, there it is. Ah, uh, take, that's, take. That's take, the take, one. Take, Blaine take, is, take, take. Playing it, the two kings. Only there it two is. kings remain on the board. That means we're going to have a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker. Wow. James, a bullet game with Hans having the white pieces this time. Right. Hans having the white pieces. And here we go. This is a bullet game. One. This is, this is, is it one second increment? Yes. One, one second one? Okay. increment. Oh, this is not... That is not enough time. <laughs> to be honest, I remember <laughs> playing that format one one. That is not enough. You may think, oh, one second, yeah, it's not. No, that still counts. That one second is is not enough time. Yeah. Same line. They're going for the same line. Same I line. No, I was gonna ask you like, how long you think they'll be repeating it. Like we'll, all the way we'll through. Like, to sacrifice what is this? His bishop You're again? gonna do this again. You're gonna do this again. He's he gonna wasn't do this doing again. Doing well, but. But He's it makes thinking. sense though, because they didn't have time to check the game. So even though Hans was really doing well, uh, it's exactly the same that they played in the first game, and neither of them could analyze it with the engine since. Wow, he's playing all the same stuff. Well, he played knight g three. He played knight d two oh, okay. last he's time. He it changed though. it up yeah. a little bit. He was like, "Yeah, you know what? Uh, I was a little too crafty." Now you gonna sack it this time? You gonna sack it this time, big fella? With a knight Are you G3. feeling froggy, bro? Are you feeling froggy this time? <laughs> Let's see. Come on. He's like, nah, not today. I, I feel you. I understand. Yeah. This should be oh, three. but if you have to play bishop d7 with a pawn down, this doesn't feel right. Although it's a bullet game, so who cares about the objective evaluation? Maybe it's still fine. Yeah, 2.7 here. Of course, anything happens in bullet games, as we know. Knight to d4. Hmm. Take, take. Or knight e5. And a knight g6. Rook to c8. And C3 immediately by Hans. They are down to 30 seconds as a one seconds, second yeah. increment. Bishop F1, very solid. Hans yeah, is making sure solid. that his king is overprotected. 95, look at the engine say you up a whole piece. You're not even up anything but a pawn. How is yeah. this up a piece like that? Knight B5, yikes. You can grab the bishop pair or a7. Uh, Maybe both. Well, b6 is a move. You locked me in there, but I could just get out. That's probably not necessary, though. I could grab it. Yeah, this is even better. This is d4. Hitting the pieces. I have a knight coming to f5. I could just win another pawn. You're just going to give me another pawn? That's what Hans said. You're going to give me another one? I'll take it. Yeah. Hans looks like he's going to grab the dub here. But wait, oh, hold on. This is uh, that one second increment time is extremely low. Queen e2, consolidate and defend. Uh, hitting. Hitting D4 there to and then open uh, to C five. Okay, cool. That works. Rook F five is just kind of annoying. Rook E seven. Two extra pawns for Hans, but Vugar is obviously still fighting to try fighting. to stay Towards in the game. Oh well, yeah, Queen D three. Knight F five. We get Knight H four. We'll have a great game here. Um, <laughs> check. Yeah, trying to get that off. Could not. In g6 is very annoying. He plays rook to d2, maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, and he would never miss slightly. a chance to trade them boys, <laughs> ever. I'm telling you, oh, we could trade that right now. <laughs> he he would never miss that a trade. End game. Just trade the queens every and only time. One instant, up, but... <laughs> instant, bro. He's he will never the not game, trade man. them boys. I mean, I like that about him, but man, he, he will always go for these end games. Yo, you got to move. Three seconds. What is this? Whoa. Yeah, and his whoa. pieces has got done like. Quite some extent more passive than Black's pieces. I think Vuga actually has good practical chances, even Absolutely. though he was down on two pawns, now down on one pawn. He has no time. One second, he's getting so low on time. He has to almost just move here. Now Vukar is getting about the same. He's gaining a little bit of time. That one second increment matters. Somebody's going to blunder something. This is the yeah. time where somebody blunders something. With the knight on the board. Uh... There it is. There's a pawn. Oh, the pawn. Get out the way. 94 check. Yeah, Here comes that was the painful speed. for Vulgar, and now the B7 pawn is gone too. He's Give me everything. His head. Everything must go. King F2, King E3, out of the oh, way. Oh, only a miracle could help here. He's out of the way, and he's connected. We got time. Vulgar is down to two seconds. It was Vulgar who actually ended up blundering. Now you got him. Rook check. Oh, moves. okay. Oh my goodness! He blundered the Rook check the form. What is he doing? He blundered it back. What is this nonsense? I have no idea what is going on. They both blundered their rooks. Oh my goodness. Grandmaster versus Grandmaster, both of them stepping into a night fork. Wow. You blunder yours, I blunder right back. 
Hans under the pressure, didn't buckle. Look at him bang himself in the head there. Wow. <laughs> Man. Oh my god, James, we'll need to play through those last moves in the heat of the time pressure. Both of them blundered their rooks. Unbelievable. And Hans played on like it was nothing. Oh, I blundered my rook because you are going to do the same. What is if wrong with you? We can bring you? up Borbeck just for a second to show oh. the, the moment because it went by oh so Oh my quickly. goodness, this man did a blunder rook. Right, right here was a crucial moment yeah. where, um, actually right here. Okay, so you play check. And then he yeah, checks just one second, again. James. I think we're gonna bring our board back in a okay. moment to be able to replay what happened here. So before this ninety five move, Rook C seven, how stepped Ooh. into it, <sighs> hitting, and then he was like, "Oh, you're gonna do the same." He didn't even resign. <sighs> hitting right back with the same thing. How do you do this? Well, that's time. Oh that's all we can say about that. It's bullet time. Chess. It's time. Oof, but chess. that means that wow. yesterday's winner of the Swiss format, Hans Niemann, continues to sail through and qualify to the semifinals. It might not have been smooth sailing, but he made it with the tiebreaker of the tiebreaker. And his opponent will be either Sam Sevian or Hikaru Nakamura. That will be our next match, uh, I believe. So we're going to either... Sure let one. me see. Are the... I was going to see if we have a quick break, but maybe the players are already ready. We're just going to uh, ask for a bit of information on how the players are doing. Hikaru is live. I can see that already. Cool. All right. We'll see you guys in a few.
Welcome back everyone to the broadcast of the Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We are now heading over to the second quarterfinal match. Grandmaster Sam Sevian taking on Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. And Hikaru has the black pieces in the first game because Sam finished ahead of Hikaru in yesterday's Swiss tournament. Oh, interesting. Yeah, uh, that's uh, actually... Crazy to say because Hikaru had half out of two, right? That sounds like a bad word, right? Now, somehow, <laughs> half out of two that started out and actually was still able to make it to the finals today. That's, that's very, very strong chess. Uh, of course, he's going to have to bring his best stuff, Sam is, because Hikaru is very, very strong as the time gets lower. And, of course, it's a fresh day. He's probably feeling better. I don't know um, if uh, Sam is going to be ready for that sometimes. So he has to bring his best to them. We shall figure out how that will be in terms of the, the shape, the form of the players. And uh, about Sam's confidence, I always, 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 whenever I see him, I think of that video where he's playing against Greg Shahade and Sam is like 12 years old. But <laughs> that's just such a great video on YouTube. Yeah, if if you guys that. haven't seen it, look it up. Yeah. Um, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and here actually Sam with a uh, C4, Knight of 3, G3 setup. English, of course, and this is um, a standard theory here. As you see, I like to see this is sort of like a delayed C3 Sicilian, but in reverse in a way um, for many cases, especially an accelerated mm -hmm. dragon player myself. This is what it looks like. This is a nice line. Knight B3 is the move here. I used to play this actually with white. It's pretty nice. You can play Knight B3 and if A5, you go, I think, B4? There's some new theory here. Oh, do you think that's what they will be playing? Or are there any other alternatives? Yeah, a e three was uh, an alternative, but the squares are uh, weak, light squares. Knight b three usually the move here. I think is a five. I think it's a five here. But let's see what Hikaru goes with. He's trying to recall. Yeah, it's a five. Ones. Yeah, a five. And if knight c three, obviously, so you play d three. That's the move. D three. And if a for a four, knight d two, and pawn takes, and you castle, and you castle. Oh. This is a very strong line. And you can play so this from the black side too as well. To yeah, for initiative, right? For queen mm -hmm. e2, knight c3, and I don't remember the theory afterwards, but casting is a very strong move here. He could just take on d3, and there it is. He castles, right? So he we goes castle. For it. He goes for it. Absolutely. He's going for a very sharp line here in the uh, Bopinic English type of I uh, thought setup. we were going to have a solid English setup, but didn't know this is nothing but solid. Sacrificing a pawn straight Absolutely. out of the opening, I'm going for Hikaru's fan. throat. Let's go for it. Absolutely. Right. Pawn takes, queen takes, e2. Oh, my goodness. All right. And if you block with bishop e7, rook e1, I mean, pressure on the e file. This is beautiful here. This is beautiful. I'm a fan of this from the white side. So for yeah. Hikaru going for this in the English here, I mean, I mean I'm not a not a fan. I'm going to be honest from the black side. But we'll, we will see. Hikaru is just a monster. We already know that. I'm slightly surprised too, James, that uh, he went for this line uh, with the black pieces. And now if you're already in here, is there anything other than taking the pawn? If he doesn't take it, he'll not have any material up. Yeah, but this he has line to actually, up the development. You're right. you're right, he does. In fact, he had a game like this in the Dutch yesterday that we was like, don't try this at home, chat, right? Because all he played the Dutch and it was like he move eight or nine right, like it is right now. And black yeah. literally had no pieces <laughs> develops at all and it was just i think he still ended up drawing the game no that was the grisha game he won that game ah. somehow later on uh, because he's just hikaru but everything was on the back rank for a very good amount of time and it mm -hmm. was like how do you play chess like this right you can't do that yeah. unless you are hikaru so we can't see i really wonder what will he do because it 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 just even even if it's not like oh white is winning out of the opening that that doesn't really exist uh, anymore that <laughs> you can win out of the opening unless you have some kind of a trap opening trap that your opponent fell into but it's it's so much easier to play this kind of position from white's perspective it feels like I mean look at him thinking in yeah. the tank Nakamura in the <laughs> tank right now he thinking thinking wow he thinking and what. What are the moves that he is thinking about? What I do know. I remember this from White's point of view. I was yeah. like, oh, White, this is cool. Oh, I get an initiative. This should be fun to play. I remember saying that when I looked at this from White's point of view. Yeah. For Black, I don't even know what to do. Maybe like D5 or D6 or I don't yeah. even know. This looks like a Dutch that he played yesterday with Grishik, but the pawn was on F5. So with mm -hmm. the pawn on F5, it's a little different, obviously. He knows his Dutch stuff. He plays Bishop B4. I mean, hey, a move. I, it's a move, right? He's trying to castle, obviously. Yeah. 
he he definitely needs to hurry up a development and the king side is the one that he's closest to in terms of uh, developing his bishop and castling as you mentioned but it just doesn't feel right <laughs> get your king out the center big fella get your king out the center so uh i mean maybe just take on d3 because you don't really have much yes this looks cool but i mean our pieces aren't even past the second rank so we do need to develop still and mm -hmm. i guess pawn takes d3 makes honestly the most sense i'm curious what does the engine say a3 bishop e7 and then take on d3 then play knight c3 where do my pieces go put a bishop on f3 interesting weird sam just takes on d3 yeah, just takes. yeah yeah also logical of course to get the pawn back ready to give a check so pick our castles immediately yeah and the castles and now of course engine was like a3 a3, which makes sense i mean you don't like you have to get the pieces out so a3 makes sense there it is and the bishop if you take i get the bishop here for free so maybe bishop e7, but I mean, I could get hit with the tempi or tempo there. Yeah, I get the bishop here, though. Knight takes. Bishop takes. Or, uh, how do you take this? Yeah, you have to take, not with the bishop, because queen takes b2 and queen b3. Maybe we don't trade, though. No, no. Yeah, bishop c3. Even that seems. I like it. There scary. it is. He goes for it. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Queen takes. So Hikaru bishop doesn't three. take the pawn. He plays d5. He needs development <laughs> more than pawns. I was like pre-move. Bishop takes. If queen takes. Bishop c3, and then uh, queen b3, and we kind of move the queen out of the way, and we aim at him. We aim at him. Even queen g5 is coming. Scary, scary stuff. So okay, d5 on the board. He needs to develop. The question is, what do we do on knight to c3? I mean, this is a development move. It hits the d5 pawn and a4. Yeah. Pawn what takes, can takes. He do? Probably just take immediately. So maybe we should take first, but then knight takes. Then knight c3. I like this position for the right. Takes, takes, yeah, knight c3. Yeah, it is still quite unpleasant for black. Um, the pair of bishops for, for Sam and also... How do you develop quickly your queen side? Hikaru's pieces are still waiting there. Right, right. Knight a6, maybe, and knight to c5 to b3. And this bishop maybe wants to sit on f5. So I like the clarity here. But after, if we do take, we are going to allow knight c6 at some point. But if we play knight to c3, takes, takes, and bishop e6 makes this pawn seem very weak. So we have to do something about it. Maybe even c5, strange move. The pawn takes his bishop b4. And if uh, queen takes, we do go with our bishop c3. He goes knight c3, natural. Natural. So that was your original suggestion. And here yeah. we analyze Six, the pawn capture. Six. Yeah, definitely. Looks like he can capture. Black gets some counterplay and gets his pieces developed, which is what he needs. Bishop b6. And it hits the pawn. And if you take mine, uh, I go queen b5. I can even take first. Now, queen b5 answers with knight c3. Interesting. This game is very complex so far. It is. I didn't expect it to be this sharp <laughs> already out of the opening. Very complex. But I mean, from what it looked like, I mean, black is, I think, bad, much, much better from where he was. Oh, I still yeah. Would take white, though. Still yeah, take yeah. White. Yeah, it feels like after bishop b4, there was something even more precise for Sam because yeah. Hikaru is out of the, the most dangerous situ situation for sure. Yeah, there's definitely some, some, some moves here now for. For Sam. Um, what is the move? Knight C3. So what does Hikaru do? What's the time? He's down a minute. I say, you usually don't have that. You usually no. don't have Hikaru being down. <laughs> no, no, no. There is increment, a two second increment, but it is surprising to see Hikaru going lower on time than his opponent. Mm. 715. It's almost a two minute difference. This is G4. Okay, so he hits the queen. And I mean, we just go queen c2. Yeah, right. develops with a tempo, logical. Queen c2, queen b3. Hmm, that's an interesting move. Well, I don't really need to go there. No, but then you're going to take this pawn. I know he would. So maybe queen c1. Yeah, I don't like queen b3. It's a weird pawn, but maybe you can't really get to it like that. Like, how do you ever, how do you get this pawn? Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you would yeah. get that. Yeah, it's kind of, it's going to take a while. But the question that is, where explains. do we put the queen? Though? Yeah, I, I guess that, that all explains why Sam is thinking now, because queen c2 is the most logical square, but I think you are right, James, that after queen b3, it's no longer that simple for white. Um, queen b3 without bishop g4 wasn't going to be a big deal because your queen is guarded on d1, but once it's on c2, black is gaining a tempo with queen b3. Right, queen b3 is definitely possible. 
Bishop g4 and bishop f3. I don't really like this. I really want to keep my bishop. And then you also have queen b2. Are you really going to go from that? Let's see. Let's see what the chat says. What's going on? Hey, hello, Pino. <laughs> You can't British really food. spill the spaghetti on this the one, Slippery is saying. <laughs> the the spaghetti, spaghetti everywhere. <laughs> never, never heard that one. Logical, logical, yeah. Not gonna lie, he's black a lot, of course. Of course. I mean, you have to always be optimistic about your position. And yeah. Agnes says this well as well. Even when he doesn't, even when the engine says you are getting crushed, you uh, want to feel optimistic a little bit about your position. This should be two, this should be five. Both need to get pieces out, correct. Let's see how long it will take for some. He actually ends up playing queen to c2. He does. He goes for it. And take on c4 very fast. Takes mm -hmm. is this? Oh, nothing. Yeah, there's nothing there. Takes, takes. Uh, yeah, he's thinking here. I wonder what the thought is. Maybe knight a4? I don't think that's possible because there's too many. Uh, queen a6 there. Maybe queen a7. Yeah, queen a7. Mm -hmm. Let's take it back here. That's almost a no fault move, but Black just gets to develop. Like he's just out. Yeah, he's just good. I'm just all pieces out, man. So fast for me, Carl. Didn't even think. <laughs> and was like, you should have thought about that, bro. Exactly. You should have thought about that. The one. bar doesn't agree with Queen A6. I was gonna say that feels like a a cool move because you guard your pawn on A4 and you attack the pawn on C4. But for some reason, the engine doesn't like it. I really don't know why. 94. Uh, I was doing something that was at the E4 square. Oh. I wanted to put the wick on E1. Mm. Still feels balanced, but there's just something wrong in the end with the queen on A6. Takes, takes. Bishop G5. Or bishop C3 takes rookie 1. Nothing there. And maybe like just the fact that uh, Hikaru's initiative is is gone, and what ha what remains on the board is the pair of bishops for white. Yeah, that's true. The bishops is a long term, definitely long term. Um, we have advantage. Uh, well, at least we have a slight, I would say, right? When we got the two bishops mm -hmm. and they open up, when you'll have an open position, open board right now. I mean, we still have threats against this king that this bishop can't even deal with. So we do have things that are coming, but we have to deal with this, which is a problem. I would love to go bishop c3, but queen takes yeah. c4 pins me. So mm -hmm. trying to get this to work. And he may be able to in a few moves. Let's see what he'll come up with, because now it's another one of those moments for Hikari where he has to take a decision. And it's not just a one move thing. It's about how do you develop the rest of your pieces, where to bring the rooks, and um, do you trade or do you try to wait it out with the knight on f6? He takes on e4. He takes with the bishop now. Bishop to d3. It's a logical move, and it also defends and lets me play bishop c3 all in one. He might have c5. That's a super GM move. C5. Yeah. Just lock everything up. Yeah, C5. <laughs> Super GM move. Of course, because he's going to defend it. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, he's going to find it. Ricky 5 hits the pawn. At least we double for free. This is what I would do. Yeah, but that, that really is such a strong move to push the pawn. And suddenly, this queen makes a lot more sense in the sixth rank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, C5 is beautiful. And he also locked up your, your threat with C5. So I, I play it. Okay, I'm going to do your, your move. I mean, Ricky 5 is a tempo, and we were able to double and get the last piece into the game. Not really doing much, but it is just a plain, solid, good chess. My pieces own the E file. Maybe yours can own the D. He plays Rook E3, same idea, but this was with tempo at least. So he doesn't want the tempo. Maybe he didn't want to block the diagonal of the bishop. Beautiful, you're right. And, I don't know, F3 maybe? Maybe he's going to double. White's for, for choice, obviously. Queen C6. What a weird situation where the free and get the bishop of white has, is already on d3. <laughs> right, I forgot he did, but the bishop was on g2. I kind of forgot that. Kind of yeah, forgot it that. feels like it was never there because now black is aiming to get those light squares around the white king. Bishop f5, I like, uh, but I, I like the double first. f3, all right, first off, fine gold is tripping. Don't play F3 or F6, right? This is crazy. <laughs> Don't touch the F1. Don't touch it, bro. Don't touch it. This could come back to bite him. 
But of course, this is a move. It stops the light square uh, problems for now, for now at least. So maybe we double now. Maybe we go G4, H4. Are you just going to go all out? You might as well, right? Do you double think he'll up. do that? So. Uh, you know what? I think he will. I'm going to double the rooks and then try to prepare H4. And there's a double and H4, G4, and G5. Why not? You know, it's low time control now. Yeah, maybe honestly, it looks very scary. Well. It looks it. Quite, uh, very scary. And maybe Hikaru should try to trade even more pieces, rook E8, and then take on E3, bring the other rook as well to the E file. There it is, queen f2. You have to cover the dark squares when we go h4, g4, because the dark squares are extremely weak. So h4, g4, g5 is going to be beautiful. Rook takes e3, rook takes, there it is, and rook e8, probably, just to get rid of that. Now your attack, if you do play h4, g4, g5, isn't as scary, but it is still scary. It's just not as scary. Rook e8, though. Rook yeah, takes, the more pieces takes. that are traded, the less likely that Sam's uh, kingside pawn pushes would lead to anything um, dangerous for Hikaru. Right. There's also, no, there's not. He played B6. There was a problem with if Rook E8, I think he went, there it is, G4. He's going for it. He's, He's going for it. it. G4, you H4. You already have, had foreseen all this, James, that he was yeah. going to go for the attack on the king's yeah. side in front of his own king, but he doesn't care. Yeah, he literally he doesn't care. He, got the queen. he literally doesn't care. Literally does not care, chat. H4, and then G5, and we're going for G5, and we live. I knew this was coming. But now he has the dark square weaknesses that I highlighted before. This is why the queen is actually good over here. Maybe you just tuck and roll with King G2. King G2, but that's like, I tuck and I roll like here. like that. Oh, yeah, the king taking over mm. uh, of the uh, protection of some of those squares. It's hanging now. This is hanging. This is hanging. Uh -oh. Bishop G2 moves out of the way. Yeah, so again, like we talked about before, this looks cool. Oh, yeah, this was cool, but, I mean, with the rooks gone, it's uh, not yeah. as scary anymore. And I need to go king g2 and move the queen. The white bishops are great at controlling all the important squares on the d5. So you see the black queen there on d6 ready to enter white's camp, but there's nowhere to go. The bishops are not letting it happen. That's right. These bishops and king g2. Ooh, king g2, queen f4. Threatening queen takes g4. What a move. That was very strong. Mm -hmm. Very strong bishop move. Remember that f3 move, right? Like Yes. <laughs> f3, you know, don't move your f1, don't play f6, and then you highlight the fact that later on, it's a problem. Later on, it's a problem. So if not king g2, let's see what else can he come up with. Moving the queen away from f2 at some point to make it to the e-file would be nice, but then there's always queen g3. That's why we wanted the king to be on g2, so right. that would have to worry about the black queen. Absolutely. But, oh, man, this yeah. is ugly. Like, I don't like this anymore, right? <laughs> I mean, you have this. Maybe we have to go queen g3 and trade, but is there a queen c1 there? You might be just losing after that. Or maybe hmm. just repeat queen f2 back and forth. Yeah. Queen e3, there's a check. Yeah, Sam, yeah, I understand. I mean, it looked great, but when the rooks came off, it was uh, it's not the greatest anymore. Because I, I mean, I have to make a concession, like bishop e4 or something. This just does not feel right. Queen f4 is coming. How do I stop it? Wow. It's suddenly it's black who will have <laughs> the control. Give a pawn up. <laughs> oh, that's how he stops it. Ah, but I, I'm, I'm hitting with tempo. I'm hitting with tempo, so I get to save a pawn. I get to save a pawn. And that endgame would still be promising for white. The pair of bishops give the right. edge to Sam. Plus the queenside majority, which is usually an advantage yeah. in endgames. Um, yeah, when you very take true. over here, absolutely. And we have the outside A. So we are we are we have some great chances here. Bishop takes F3 is coming. What can Hikaru do in this case? It feels like he should not go for the queen trade. Yeah, in fact, after Queen H2, maybe uh a good question because queen b8 i mean if you don't trade well cool bro appreciate it like we coming <laughs> through the back door seeing who home real quick also queen e5 is a move as well so i mean just centralizing the yeah. queen and you can't even check me like look at how the bishops dominate everything true, it's beautiful true. look at I yeah, mean, the whole bishops. like everything is dominating this whole line which is nice yeah i was wondering about queen e6 but i think you're right that then queen e5 and uh, you're pushing the queen the black queen even further back yeah, I'm just kind of like relaxing because I mean, Queen H2 goes into us. There he goes. He, I think he had yeah, to practically had go to. for this because the Queen mm -hmm. has so many squares, and yeah. White just has a slightly better end game. Yeah, so it's not that um, Hikar is that happy about this end game against right. the pair of vicious, but he didn't have anything better. Correct. Correct. 
and that's King H2. So now we just uh in game this boy out. This is gonna be a long one. The problem is like if the bishop gets behind the pawns, in some cases you can be in trouble. That's a beautiful move. I love yeah. it. Concession now. C4. What do you do? B3? How do you wait a second? Am I just this I is troublesome. This this could be the reason why this position is actually not better for white, because you are losing the C pawn. I lose the C pawn. Now I have the queen side majority. But still equal because the bishop pair usually is equal to a pawn. I've heard this many times. The bishop pair can equal to a pawn in, in, in certain positions, obviously. Yeah. But here, as you see, I think I'm down a pawn, right? Yeah, white's down a pawn, but the position is zero. It's from the engine because of the bishop pair, I believe. So it's mm -hmm. very important to understand that. It's crazy. Yeah, but I mean, black's black's fine. He's up a pawn. He's up a pawn. Up a pawn and doesn't mind going That's back it. to e8 to guard the c7 square. So there's no bishop c7. This is that 28, like 2800. 2750 <laughs> chess here on the car here. It's just like, I mean, <laughs> uh, position looks terrible. Now I'm up a pawn. Like, how? F4, G5. I mean, you might as well at this point. It's almost tilting. Yeah, why is it so active? There it is. Come on. I mean, I'm like, bro, come on. Like, how is he doing this to me? How is he doing this to me? It's crazy. G5 okay. now, and this is Hikaru who has, has to, again, make sure that he calculates precise, then pushes F6. Ah, there's nothing. <laughs> there is nothing. Wait a second. No, he gets there. Bishop takes, takes, knight F7, he covers. He it covers. would have been beautiful, yeah. though, a bishop yeah, sacrifice to create a pass pawn. He covers everything. Wow. Hikaru is just an absolute, like, you can't, you can't, like, it's just like playing an engine sometimes, you know what I mean? It yeah. really just hurts, like. <laughs> You play so well, and you just can't win. <laughs> you just can't win. Jeez, Hikaru is just so strong, bro. Yeah, and this Yikes. is the, the the phase where he is up a pawn, and he's no longer that passive. The the pieces of black have pieces gotten come, much yeah. more active. So, yeah, it's very difficult to play against a player of uh, Hikaru's strength. King d5, bishop c3, f5. Bishop f3, and we also walk our king in. You have to be very careful of this. This is a huge idea. f5 first with tempo. Bishop e2 now cuts me off. Bishop c2, wonder what that's for. Put the knight in here. Quick moves. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's pressuring him on the time. Yeah. This is over. And then we look like we had two bishops. These don't look like bishops anymore. Yeah, the position has gotten a lot, a lot more closed, and the knight has amazing squares like the e4 square. What do we do, though? How do we, uh, how do we finish this off? Let me, uh, let me just bring the king in. Oh, but you got to be careful of like something yeah. weird like that. It feels like it should still be equal, but it is It is now harder from Sam's perspective. I feel like he's somewhat lower on time, and this knight is a tricky, tricky monster. Just like we saw in that last game. Yes. You forked me, and you see how cool? I mean, like, that clip was amazing. Hans was so like, I forked, oh, I got forked. And it kept moving, and then forked him back. I know. It was. I mean, never seen anything like it. Like, like that was that was crazy. That was absolutely nuts. Oh, do we have a draw? Do we it have a draw be, by Reppy? Could be because uh, Hikaru has to Rep. continue with King e7, and now will he play Bishop g4 or will he go back to e6 and accept the draw? Draw by Rep. Do we rep it out or do we do something else? You have check. Oh, I can't move the king. And then I, I mean, bishop takes h5. <laughs> Don't blow <laughs> the king. All right. You know, just like Sam Shanklin played king c2, right, in Olympiad yeah. over the board, oh stepped my. into check. That hurts. Oh, the king my. Here, here, right. The time is very low. F5. Oh, uh, hold up. No, but you can't do anything. I have a box around this pawn. I have a box around this pawn. Uh oh. You carl down the seconds here. We yeah, have the he's majority. trying. Should we draw? He didn't draw. want to draw. He wants to keep trying in case he, he can break through. He is. Time's getting lower, though. Time's getting lower. Draw definitely diminishes more as the time gets lower. So if I go gobble these, what happens? Maybe, maybe. Looks scary. I mean, right. Hold on, big fella. Can I gobble this? Maybe, uh, F6? No. Oh, Repeat. The gain some time, maybe. Maybe gain some time. <laughs> Repeat once. Repeat once. He's considering it. He goes to c4, offers the trade. Uh, Opposite colored bishops now. Yeah, this is ops and this is draw. This is draw. Draw by agreement. 
and a draw was offered and agreed well that's good news for us again because the more draws we see the more chess we're gonna see too there that's needs right. to be a tiebreaker now a uh, blitz game three plus two with colors reversed james from Let's this see. first game how do you feel about this match and who do you think has the better chances i think ikaru now because he now goes into three i mean we know i mean look at his rating 31 75 now of course sam's is <laughs> 30, 34, nothing to be like mad about. I mean, higher rated to yeah. some old engines, right? So, but 3175 is a whole hundred points more, right? Yeah. And he's a uh, very, very scary. So we don't know, but we are going to play very hard chess. We do know that. And it's going to be a Roy, it looks like. Mainline Roy, take on E5. Mm -hmm. C3 is usually knight B2 and C3 after knight C5. C3, there it is. And then I don't remember what to do. I think it's Ricky 1, Bishop C2, A4, even stuff like this. It's all the same. All the same. Yeah. <laughs> literally always the same. at least it's not the berlin we are happy to see right. pieces on the board yeah if i would have went to sleep absolutely if you see a berlin we're gonna take a nap and come back f5 <laughs> Maybe so three, f5 is three. usually the key move to guard at night now the knight jumps back to b3 since f5 was provoked and knight to d4 very uh good game here of course people love the roy because it says that they guarantees white a slight advantage which is something that you like to have is the slight advantage at least good positioning mm -hmm. but black's just fine as well pieces developed rooks connected no problems rook to e1 and uh sam is i guess he's still just trying to recall his own preparation mm -hmm. i don't know if he prepared it for today for specifically for today too or, or in general obviously this is part of his repertoire and he's trying to remember the line absolutely i mean even as somebody with car too you don't even know what he's gonna play sometimes but you know yeah. he does play this Which move play, <laughs> right with b3 he's gonna play move. the larson e4 what is he gonna do right i know so, you know it's kind of hard to even prep for that you just got to be ready yeah. with all of your files usually and man, here the time is getting very low for sam here that is not a good sign as uh this is a three minute game two second yeah game. yeah much lower time control in comparison to the previous rapid game of course mm -hmm. yeah it's just uh it's difficult when he curls up on time it's almost like an extra piece now he's making it a little bit better it's, it feels better if i'm sam okay cool now it's only only a few seconds here now 94. Oh, wait, wait, he plays 94 and the bar drops I mean, the saying that the pawn is the free hanging. and will be taken. And he did it, F3 and C5. So if I move the knights to F5, I don't know. I mean, engine gives some stuff, but I like knight F5 immediately. What What do you do yeah. after knight F5? This is beautiful. Maybe you take on C3, I take on E7, I win a piece. What? What's wrong? Knight F5. This is an absolute mess. So he could sacrifice the wrong. pawn because of this E file attack. The rook is basically picking there up all of those pieces. Knight takes F5 is on the board oh, indeed. That's a big boy move. How is this not even better for white? This feels great. Feels great. We're about to open up shop here. I mean, it's so many tactics. Your E knight looks gross. Mm hmm. I'm still wow. puzzled why the engine Let's um, back. did yeah. not like this. It's actually, I'm very curious to know as well. The move is f3 and get this move bishop h5 oh just to pin the pawn and the queen cannot <laughs> get out of the pin oh my gosh that was the key oh my goodness that's funny that's wow funny. This, this was missed both by hikaru yeah. and by sam so the wow. current position is wow. a lot better in comparison to what it could have been for Hikaru. Uh, still a mess, though, and still about equal, or or maybe still better for Sam, but I, I just have no idea. I think we have a few more moves that were played here. Uh, James, I don't know if we can update our board. Oh, sorry, right, correct, correct. This is it. Queen of six, and then Bishop Move B3. Move to F6 yeah. and Bishop sure B3. Right. So the bar is still claiming that this is better for Black, even if it wasn't the top moves of the engine. Yeah, that was crazy. Bishop H5 was a sweet move, right? Yeah. Okay, Bishop B3 on the board here. So oh. now let's take a look. Everything is still very, very um up in the air. The pawn on C5, the pawn on D5. What do you do? If I take... Yeah, this is hard actually to realize. I actually don't know. Rook D8 maybe. Maybe it feels D, natural, then, yes. Yeah, yeah. Rook D8, I like. 
because I mean you're taking, but I'm taking I'm taking a hit in the queen. There's f6. I think rook d8 feels like a good move. There it is, rook d8. And so he plays it. Rook d8 feels right, but there's uh he's under a minute. He's under a minute oh, here. Against a lot the card to be low on time. As if things were already not difficult enough with equal time against Hikaru. Wow. Yeah, it's but he's hard. threatening D takes E4, um, the discovered attack. I think um I think we lost Hikaru for a second. He might be playing an ad on his stream, but his camera will be back in a moment after this commercial break. commercial <laughs> break. <laughs> I'm glad that it wasn't the pizza again, though. Um, why we were on a break we saw Hikaru's camera playing yeah, and pizza. it was such a tasty pizza. Oh I, couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. I just got so hungry from looking at his camera. The pizza that was, that was like a close up zoom in on the cheese. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I'm not having none of that. You can't even eat that right now. And you know what? That sounds so good. Okay. So he takes D4 on the board. Bishop takes, takes, knight. Um, wait, what is this? What if I take with the knights? Excuse me. Then there it is. Knight takes d4. Says Hikaru. And for your next trick, maybe bishop c5 is kind of annoying. Rook f1 to follow. And knight f5. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. This knight gets to f5. Gary has a quote. What does he say? Um, when a knight, a knight on f4 or a knight on f5 will win games. This was a long time ago. So mm. I mean, understanding getting a knight here is, is yeah super, super strong. It is a very very dangerous piece, definitely. Um, so bishop time. c4 was met by bishop b3 to Ugh. pin the bishop. Uh, but after king h8, now the bishop is finally threatening to take the queen again. Yeah. And uh, 16 seconds here. 16 seconds for Sam. Only a two-second increment. Takes, takes. Rook f1 first. Ooh, this dark squares are going to be very weak, bro. I don't know. Sam in the think tank. He got to think. Maybe queen. Oh, I can't get anywhere. He get it. Queen b6 anyway. Oh, he did it anyway. I thought he wasn't going to play that. Rook takes f8. We need to move. Bishop f2. He has to hurry oh, up with seven shoot. seconds on the clock. He takes what do I it do? to bishop. He wants uh, am to I to losing? Bishop I'm not. C5. But like, this is losing. Wait, I'm, I don't wait. know what it was. I don't know what it was. I don't know how. Oh, how my. Uh, I got to go back and see this. Oh, okay. He missed it too. He missed the killer shot. What was it? it what they was killing both here? both missed it, and it's only seven Five, seconds left for nine. Sam, so he H6. missed the crucial oh, yeah. line. Yeah, the crucial line actually was something stupid. It said H6 there, actually. So yeah. H6. Oh, my gosh. We can take what a look was? at it after the game, because yeah. this is still in the heat of the time pressure. Uh, anyone's game. This could be any of the three possible results. With 17 seconds for Hikaru, he's up time a little bit. Looks like Black's trying to consolidate, but we have a very strong knight on d5, knight c3, with the idea of playing e5. e5 now is going to be hit with rook e8. Uh, maybe not, though. Actually, it is defended. So bishop e7 stepping out of the way. And maybe bring the knight back. There it is. Knight f4 for the score. Knight f4 is coming. Bishop g5 stops it. h4 will hit that bishop. He does it. Bishop d2, rook e2. There it is. Bishop d2, rook e2. Where are you going, big fella? Find him yeah. rook one even better because bishop c1. And now what? Are turning How do we in... do this? Rook takes do you sack it? Oh, king g1. King g1. Oh my goodness. Mona king to g1. And I cannot hold king everything nine. protected. That's it. That's it. That's a cute little maneuver he had there. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. King h1, step out the way. And e7. Oh, have a e nice hit. wins the game. Yikes. And Sam that's knows it. it. He loses on time, but the position was already lost. What a comeback by Hikaru Nakamura. James, I think we need to go back briefly to that moment where everything was on fire and it felt like Hikaru was in trouble, actually. But Sam was really was low on moment. time. This was the moment after rookie one here. The move here is H6. What okay. a move. What the <laughs> heck is H6? Just prophylaxis, I guess. So yeah, that there's and no I guess it says issues. it's like your your Zugzwang. You know, it's sometimes you're, you're somehow in Zugzwang here. So if you make a move like... What about h3? h3 runs into bishop b4 now. What is this? This is a very hard line. Very hard. So was it why 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 wasn't that there before? Bishop b4. So what about bishop b4 now? He's able to play rook f1 and rook d2 doesn't work due to problems uh, on the back rank. Yeah, so with h6 on so the board. So you had to play h6, mm -hmm. right? So h6. So now if you do the same, then I have bishop b4, so when you go rook f1, I go rook d2, right? And then you move and I play rook takes g2. 
It's gross. Oh my god. And if gosh. queen f3, right, then we go rook d3 and everything's pinned. It, this whole diagonal, the dark square diagonal thing was huge. It's just too much pressure there. But he missed it, obviously not having any time. So Yeah, you know. seven seconds on yeah. the clock. I think we can understand that it wasn't the easiest for him to spot all this. Hikaru has put a lot of pressure on his opponent um, in the previous game and in this game, time-wise as well. And he qualifies to the next stage after making this huge comeback in the game. And he will be the opponent of Hans Niemann in the semifinals. Ooh, but that's be spicy. yeah, but before we go there, I think we'll take a quick break. And when we are back, we will get started with our third match of the day Jeffrey Zhang facing Vladimir Fedoseyev. And then Kirill Alexeyenko and Le Kwang Lian will be our final match of the quarterfinals. This is the Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. We will be back in a moment. Welcome back, everyone, to the broadcast of the Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. James and I are here to see who will qualify to the semifinals. We already have one side of the bracket clarified. Hans Niemann will be facing Hikaru Nakamura in the semifinals. Uh, but on the right side, there's still two matches. James, do you have any predictions on who will make it? You know, we have Chef Jeff as well. I like to call him over there, Jeffrey Jean. Uh, he's always cooking up something nasty every game, every time. It's just precision. <laughs> And then you have a uh, Fedoseyev over there, who's also a big fish. In fact, he is oh, yeah. very, very strong. But <laughs> I do think Jeffrey is the favorite in that matchup. And then we have Elisenko versus Liam Lay. Liam Lay, I think, I think is the favorite there. But Elisenko is, is no slouch. And he is an underdog, but he swings very hard. So uh, I think Liam is the favorite there. But we do have uh, lots of matches left. Game's going to be starting soon. But Jeffrey yeah. up first. Exactly. Jeffrey with the white pieces since he finished ahead of his opponent in yesterday's Swiss format and he is ready with a queen pawn push d4 and c4 queen's gambit. let's see yeah let's see queen's gambit slav defense what type of structure will fedosev go for he's actually thinking too like what do i want to do queen's gambit decline okay he knows too many openings you know uh, <laughs> i don't have this issue uh, <laughs> i only play this the one. same thing <laughs> Let's do this one here. And we have a QGD, but a Rogozin in a four check. Knight C6, E3. Okay. These are fine for both sides. Yeah, but very traditional opening with the Queen A4 check, forcing the Black Knight to C6. So it's more difficult for Black to push the, the C pawn. Bishop to D2. E3 castles, Bishop D2 here. Very nice and slow, easy play. 
easy play. Black's in low though. Um, hmm, I think this would be seven. I'm also seeing capture. These lines are like, you got to know your theory here. I'm not a DeGrosen player here. I do know you take. Okay, you brought the dish back to D6. So now we want to play mm -hmm. E5. So now it's pretty clear. Yes. Okay, this looks clear. Bishop D, yeah. Now we're going to put the queen back. A3 and Bishop D3. Councils. Jeffrey is so insanely fast that he's collecting time, not spending time. Our time control, by the way, is 10 plus 2. We're going to update uh, in the corner of our scene that we are back to, obviously, the first games of the Rapid Chess Championship. So it's a one-game match. One and only one game to decide who makes it to the next stage. And we will only see a second or third game between these two in case it's a draw. Ah, in case it's a draw. It is in here. I know Jeff is uh, very, very strong when it, when the time gets lower as well, too. So there are lots of... Uh... Oh, wait, hold on. What just happened there? If I played F4 after that. I was not expecting this. Yeah, He's gonna especially go now with that castling. So you would have thought that White has to castle first before going for something such as such a concrete, such a forcing line. Yeah, I literally think he's going to go queenside here. I mean, that is, uh, he might have to give up the bishop here and try to go 94 in some cases, but that is, I mean, maybe rookie 894, I don't know, but he's definitely about to get this man with a castle queenside. I like the aggression here. I think he's going to go this way, chat. I think he's going to go this way. I was going to say, this is the most solid opening we had today. <laughs> All the games were crazy wild. Ball right. sacrifice, bishop sacrifice. Oh, Jeffrey man. wants to castle queenside. Are you telling me this is also on fire, this board? This is crazy. Queen's Gambit uh, uh supposed to be very safe and solid opening. Just when yeah. you thought you were safe to go outside. It's not, <laughs> it's not safe to go it's outside. Not. F4. And Bishop takes and takes and Kyle. I mean, like, yeah, he's in the think tank. Look at Jeffrey, 10 minutes, right? Isn't Didn't he start with 10 minutes? Yeah, and he just refuses to spend any of that amount of time. He's just happy with the two-second increment, enough time per move. Vlad <laughs> looks stressed right now, doesn't he? I can understand him. He when you see stressed. that your opponent might just go opposite side castling, not spending any time. So this is still Jeffrey's preparation. Yeah, that's so, hard. So, so hard. Tough. A tough situation. It is. Yeah. It's a very tough situation to be in, especially you're out of book. Obviously, you're out of prep here. You don't know. He might be trying to literally just rip your head off here on national television, casting queen side. Right, this is going to be scary. I mean, especially if he gets pushed back, right? That's a tempo. And then we castle. Maybe even e4, e5 is there. h3, g4, g5. Everything five. You're getting yeah. made yeah. somehow. <laughs> it's getting scary. It it's very is scary. Getting it's, very I think you scary. might have to take. Let me see what the engine says. The engine laughs at this. Zeros. And it says, yeah, you need to take. The best move is taking on c3 or taking on f4, Anna. You can take on f4, believe it or not. Mm. <laughs> it says takes takes Ricky eight Bishop e two Bishop g four and somehow like this is uh equal the engine is like man hold up like what is this with a get piece this off the screen down. Man, get this off the screen. I'm not it's even gonna look at that equal uh -huh. we're not even about to entertain that but f four Bishop great. takes c three Bishop d six is apparently okay but Bishop takes c three is what they oh want the most oh my Bishop takes f four if that is a move that any of these players will actually like execute on the board that's it crazy that for it. like you know what it's the fight yeah you know what i don't even care just do it but if it doesn't work <laughs> you are down a piece yeah oh my that that is you might be thinking such of that, a crazy I mean, line shoot he didn't spend five minutes here this is the biggest time edge we've seen so far in the matches yeah he he takes, he takes on, on c3, c3 which is the more yeah. human decision for yeah. sure yeah, he takes on C3. And now, ooh, no King F2. That blocks Bishop of Ace, literally. Wow, Castling, take on E3. I dare you. I dare you, young man. I dare you. Queen takes E3. With so check. Jeffrey, again, with more time than what he started with, he is just giving up a pawn with a check. Why is he disrespected for right now? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, use some of your time, Jeffrey. Use some of your time. That's He's ready fair, to give bro. up a pawn with a check and claim that the pair of bishops and his initiative 
is more than enough to compensate. And we can see how powerful those bishops are. As soon as the queen takes on e3, bishop takes f6 is one of one of the threats to damage the pawn structure in front of the, the black king or play rook f3, rook e1. Everything is coming with a tempo. Wow, he is locked in. He is locked in right now. Jeffrey is locked in. This is the Jeffrey, the chef Jeff that I never want to see. It's very scary. You do not want to play this man when he's locked in right now. As you see, Castle, <laughs> I didn't lose any time. We're on move 15, and I'm up time, right? Yeah. I'm up uh, with more time than I started with. Very strong uh, play from Jeffrey here. Not Hasn't bad an eye yet. He hasn't and even started thinking yet. You know? It's I know. It's crazy. This is his home prep, and it, it, he is still in his home prep. Yeah. Yeah, this is home prep. This is a pretty nasty prep here. A very, very impressive from Jeffrey. And the thing is, the evaluation bar is showing about equal, right. but to play this against someone who has prepared this, analyzed it in depth with the engine, and right. you're sitting there with your human brain with four minutes on the clock, I don't <laughs> think this is equal. Yeah, equal what? Excuse me, right? Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. This is not equal at all. The engine laughs at us as they find some stupid line. Like, let's see what it is. Let's, let me just put it in it. It says here, and then queen e4. And then you're supposed to go here, and then this is equal. Now, I guess I can get that because it is defending, but at the same time, it is quite sharp. Rook A to, rook a to C1 is next. You're supposed to go Rook D8. What does this even do? Why are you moving this Rook to D8 and not developing your bishop? I don't know. But the engine says that's the best move, right? That doesn't make that's any sense, crazy. right? So it's very difficult here. He's in a very he's in the hot seat, to say the least. Um, Vladimir Fedeseev, that is. And maybe he won't even take it. He's like, you know what? I'm not going for this. But then that allows rookie one and e4 in some cases. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> Three minutes on the clock for Vladimir Fedoseev. Right. And it feels like as if this game was a game between two players of almost very different strengths. No, Vladimir Fedoseev is a very strong grandmaster, but he has been caught in a line where he is not the one with the home prep. And Jeffrey is He's so confident, game. so fast. He gave up that pawn with a check and after queen b6, this is the first moment he's actually spending time. All right. First time he's spending six minute time edge here. Beautiful. But now we have to find the follow up because we did give up a pawn. Now we talked about before the bishop pair being an advantage or at least equal to a pawn. So yes, I have a pawn deficit, but the initiative and the bishop pair says it's equal. In fact, it's slightly better engine wise, 0.4. Um, they give to white even being down upon because of the initiative and again the uh the bishop pair i think something maybe like rook f3 rook g3 or like maybe just bringing the last piece in the game or something like this could be possible so i really like that rook lift idea yes definitely oh well, yeah definitely we got to do some rook lifting i think here jeffrey with the six minute time advantage he's spending <laughs> some time here <laughs> jeff jeff <laughs> definitely i like that in the chat he marinated this opening through and through. He did. <laughs> Absolutely. He definitely marinated this opening. Chef Jeff has uh, cooked up something very nice here. and But now he has to finish. So yes. let's see how he'll do it. Again, in terms of the objective evaluation of the position, it's not a winning position, but it certainly is very, very hard to face it from Black's perspective. It's only three minutes on the clock and having to face... Uh, this initiative that white is building up look at the bishops how powerful they are the rook is ready that's to swing right. over to g3 oh yeah rook, rook g3 that's for me but what else do you do after rook g3 is i don't know what the follow-up is yet and we need to figure that out maybe like a queen b3 no okay he played bishop d7 that just gives me a freebie a freebie. yeah that's what i wanted the rook g3, what is it that that's black right. can do? But now, now we need to find the kill shot, which is like, I'm almost tempted to play queen f2, right? Almost, it doesn't work, but the idea here is we're just trying to divert the queen or deflect <laughs> the queen to be able to play bishop take f6 <laughs> or even a rook g7. So like, if we could get the queen, oh, here's a move, queen e4. What? It almost works. I love these kind of stuff. Rook g7, <laughs> but he takes and takes the bishop. Like, it's something like this. There it is. There's plus two. So something's wrong. We just got to oh figure my. out what is it. I can't Where believe all it? that Vladimir did in the last two moves is to develop two of his pieces and he's lost. So whatever he had to <laughs> right. do was much harder than developing logically your pieces. Right, right, right. Well, actually, what what was the move here? The engine went down immediate point here. Queen yeah. D3. I don't know what that actually does. Maybe here. Maybe the same idea. Oh. But they wanted Queen D3 instead of Rook D1. Oh. 
to threaten the capture on d7. Seven. Yeah, because I like the queen sack idea because you do have the bishops here. Oh, completely winning. Oh. Plus six. What is it, chat? Hold on. Can we find it before Jeffrey does? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Bishop him. d4, maybe? Yeah. Maybe it's just bishop here and GG. Have a nice day. Bishop d4, rook e1, bishop e5, queen here. Bishop takes b5. No. What is it? What is it? Bishop... Oh. Oh, it's just, just queen, queen f5. f5, threatening to Yikes. take on f6. That simple. Doesn't matter that the bishop is hanging on c4. f6 is the oh, key square, goodness. the dark squares. Mm -mm -mm. Queen f5. Yikes. Oh, my. This was such an incredible game. I know it's still on. I, I, I shouldn't be talking in past tense. But it feels like Jeffrey is about to crush an oh, extremely yeah. strong grandmaster out of him. the opening. Watch this. Rook takes g7 is the threat. Followed by queen g5, bishop takes f6, get the man off the board. This is a uh, this is gross. This is scary. Is. Hopefully you did your tactics today, chat. It's about to get very spicy here from Chef Jeff cooking up something very special. Rook takes g7 and queen g5 and we live. This is scary. There it is. Boom! Rook takes g7. Oh my and goodness. he plays it within a second. Oh really? We playing this out? Oh, we playing this out? Okay. All, All right. he needs is to bring the All rook right. into the game. B3, many. Now uh, we have There's to... There's still back rank issues, so he cannot go for immediate rook lifts. I, maybe rook 6 is annoying. Yeah, F5. F5. We don't want rook 6 So then yeah. H3 and then rook D4, rook G4. Exactly. The rook can come to G4, the rook can come to H4. I don't think there's a way for black to even have a chance to survive here. You Not can't even, any you can't tricks. do anything. Right, there's nothing. You don't have any moves. Yeah. You have no moves. Insane. We can put this, we can take this off the board. That probably yes. looks like the same <laughs> position. Rook uh, h3. Yep, there it is. And then rook d4 to g4. But he's going to play bishop e2. So how do we wiggle in there? That's that's kind of annoying. How is he doing that? Can't. How does he, how does he do that? <laughs> do I guess that? he can still go to that? h4. So after yeah, rook d4, you are, you are threatening both g4 and h4 with the mm, rook lift yeah. and uh rook queen h6 in there very nice there's just no stopping this bishop yeah, d5 nice. is his move and now rook d3 since the d3 square got available Step x in the big fish exactly chat exactly here rook d3 and rook g3 here jeez man you can just see uh for the sake of dejected there, you see his lights going in and out. Right? That's like <laughs> that's like from his brain, you know, that's the brain power. Right oh now. my god, wow. this, this is, is some kind of a stranger some type of things movie. episode. Yeah, stranger <laughs> things, exactly. He's like about to explode here. You can tell they're King H2. And this is it. 12 seconds on the clock versus eight minutes. Jeffrey Zhang crushing a super grandmaster as if it was the easiest task in the world. Wow. Look at the time edge. What do you use? Like almost three minutes? I mean, wow. Absolutely. That was quick, easy, efficient. Chef Jeff did and what he came to do. That was absolutely a beast mode there from, from Jeffrey Zhang. Wow. I think Vladimir will Incredible. be like, where did I go wrong? Because it wasn't even obvious. Where Incredible. is it that he messed it up? Yeah, that's actually correct, right? I mean, everything was all fine here. I mean, Rogozin, man, I'm not playing no Rogozin anytime soon. Yeah, here, this was uh, very sharp. Here, takes, takes, F4. And apparently, it's not that he even went, he went wrong because of not understanding this position. The engine says this is equal, but you, it, it's a sequence of moves that is... Uh, very hard for a human, even as strong as Fedeseev, to find. He had to go here, here, move this rook for some reason, and then play bishop e6. It's the strangest oh thing ever, right? And queen b6 was okay, but it was uh, it was out of nowhere. I mean, look at this. Pieces are all developed and losing. Losing. Yeah. It's really hard, really hard. Too much initiative here. Too much as uh, oh. he goes on. Wow. That was a crazy game. As Brad is saying in the chat, big fish versus even bigger fisherman. <laughs> Jeffrey was the big fish, man. Man. big fisherman here, and he yeah. moves on to the semifinals. Man, yeah. He moves on to the semis, right? And we have uh, some more chess as well. That next matchup will be Liam Lay and Alisenko, actually. That's going to be a big match. We well. can take a look at our bracket 
for a moment to see that that is going to be the next quarterfinals. We're going to take a short break. And when we are back, the last quarterfinal will determine who is going to be the opponent of Jeffrey. I don't think I would want to be the opponent of Jeffrey, but someone has to be. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. My name is Elwood Dawson. I'm from Chicago. I'm Seeker Blackman. My name is Roberto Beza, Jr. And what I want to share is I love tacos. Tacos and chess. So, yeah. With the chess program, really, even chess in general, like on the deck, you, uh, you kind of lose yourself. You don't really think about your case. You learn to think differently. You know, you strategize more. I sometimes come out uh, 7.30 in the morning, I'll probably play until lockup, you know, so it makes my day go by faster. It's competitive. It's a lot of trash talk. It's, it's, it's crazy, you know, like the chess players, we got our own little circle, you know, and all of us play each other. We talk trash about who be who, who garbage. Yeah, I never play that dude again. He garbage. I never play him. But yeah, it's real competitive. Okay, we're ready for a small press conference. It is something that has never happened anywhere in the world before. To have correctional facilities all around the world playing at once in a chess tournament. I mean, it's very proud to participate in this tremendous event. It will be an honor for us to be part of any of your future undertakings. Last year, we organized the first international um, intercontinental online championship for, for, the, for prisoners. It was 31 country participating, 40 teams, five female teams. I know without name in the country that some maximum security facilities where prisoners could not be more than one in a room. Before I met him, I would never like that people do that. I think, yeah, it's chess competitions, but all over the world, online, throughout the jails, playing against each other, that's a whole different thing. Like, he opened that up. There was a incredible level of anxiousness that was neat, that reminded you of how athletes would be before the big game, before the kickoff.
Welcome back everyone to the Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. This is going to be our final quarterfinals match. The two gentlemen on the screen are about to battle it out for that one spot. Only one of them can advance to the next stage to be the opponent of Jeffrey Zhang. I don't know, James, I said it. I don't know if I would want to <laughs> actually move on to the next stage and face Jeffrey. <laughs> Man, after what Chef Jeff cooked up there, that was crazy. That was ridiculous. It was just like a very clean miniature in a way and it was very strong he was up time the man knew exactly what he was doing so jeff is in great form here very scary he can get to the finals this way but of course he does have a player that he's gonna have to face whether it's liam lee or uh elisenko here as uh this match is about to get started in a few exactly and we will see i believe alexenko with the white pieces he is the one who finished ahead in yesterday's Swiss format. So the top eight players of yesterday's tournament are here. And depending on how high up in the, in the, the field you finish, such as Hans Niemann taking first place, you will be able to take more uh, white color in the matches. Uh, Kirill Alexeyenko ready to make his first move, I believe. Absolutely. Waiting for their game to pop up there. And then Kirill... Yeah, we're we'll, we'll just waiting for him to get and back into his who chess.com get, account. Uh, yeah, right. Who gets white in this? Oh, Kirill will have the white pieces. Kirill. Oh, he, he made it back to our playing area, and E45 is on the board. Okay, man, three. We have another Italian. Do you think they were inspired by some of the previous matches and so. it will be similar? The choice. I think so. Even with knight c3 and like, oh, that knight g8 stuff, and look at that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we ain't doing none of that. That doesn't the work. Bishop sacrifice. <laughs> that bishop sacrifice was nuts. Uh, the double rook fork. It's insane. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. A4. So A4. This is all standard. All standard. We see uh, at all levels actually. This particular position. You can go mini routes. And D6. Right. Castles. H3. Any of these moves. It really matters actually though. But the knight on c3 is a little bit different than the standard c3 b4. True. This is a different setup. There's so many ways in which you can play the Italian and uh, so many different move orders as well. So the players are kind of trying to, to to feel in which direction the opponent is expecting this line to go. So far, both of them are refusing to castle, keeping it flexible. Absolutely. H3 stopping uh bishop g4 stuff of course a lot of time h6 doing the same and what's funny <laughs> is if one side castles the other side pushes the g pawn so mm -hmm. that's a lot of times when i look at that bishop e3 yeah. probably bishop e6 <laughs> like you know yeah. i'm not gonna castle you're not gonna castle right as soon as you castle i'm gonna push you with g4 or g5 exactly. and a lot of times you just go for mate it's very fun because that side that castles first there it is now oh! g4 could Black be played Lang right Liam now. with a brave castle king He's side. Like, nah, bro, I'm out of here. Nah, I ain't doing none of that. <laughs> says, more I'm solid. Cool. Cool more solid, solid, but also very logical, of course. Right. I would have loved to see that G4, G5, oh, yeah, James. 100% G4, G5. I mean, I'm a big fan of it. Anytime I can push a G pawn in a game with white, I'm probably going to do it. So mm. pawn takes E3 there at knight H4, knight F5, knight D2. Not taking on e6, as that would have led to a completely symmetrical pawn structure, or that almost identical. Why? And now, uh, open f file. Maybe we swing this knight to f5. Hmm, that's a clever idea. But then he's going to play d5, but I get the extra pawn in the center. So maybe knight e2. He takes, knight takes, and d5? Nah, I don't need to do that. It doesn't make sense, does it? Take, 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 and it's just fine. This is like boring. There's nothing going on. <laughs> yeah, it feels so much, so much oh, man. Tra more traditional and solid in comparison to all the previous matches where we had seen fireworks from the very beginning. But maybe this is the calm before the storm. That's right. D5. <laughs> yeah, D5, right? Just trade it all off. E4, making, okay, I like that. This is, this is a little spicy. Now we yeah. got some imbalances. I like this a mm -hmm. lot from Kirill here. After takes, takes, we have 93 going to F5 or D5. And we have the open F file, which you don't. So this is actually slightly better, I would say, for white here. But Knight F4 
is a very strong move. King H2 with G3. I'm about to kick that knight up out of there. Yeah, immediately played King H2. I was out. wondering if that was going to be a follow-up with that Queen D7, but Knight G6, not even waiting for White to push G3. Yeah, and now we can reroute Knight E3, or we just go Knight D5. Now it's Knight E7 there. So Knight yeah. E3, I wonder why he's not playing it. Maybe Queen G5 he's afraid of or doesn't like. Maybe. And so he had to move. Uh, it feels like he went back to g6 willingly, so there are no tactics with knight takes e5 undermining his knight on f4. Um, now that pawn is uh, double guarded by the knights. Double guarded, correct, here. And uh, f6, don't play. Man, we saw what happened last time. Don't push the f-pawn. Be very, no. very cautious of that. It's g4. is going to be queen g5, maybe. Knight e3, though. And knight of five. He's very huge. He's thinking, let's see what, what the engine says. Engine says rook f2. Wow. A5 and knight e3. Okay. Mm. Rook f2. I like it. I like it. It's a little nifty move. Maybe queen f1. But rook f2, queen d2, doubling. All possible. Yeah. The semi open f5, f5 is certainly um, a factor that's crucial here for white to have some kind of an advantage. Time, pretty good. Pretty level for both. But the plan yeah, this is, is what not matters. the Jeffrey speed. Yeah, man, Jeffrey was just. If he does that every game, you have a, you have no chance. Like he lets Karu. I mean, Karu obviously always has a chance, but man, that's a that was very impressive from Jeffrey. Incredibly it was impressive. Like quick, in and out, get the job done. Next game. Yeah, and I wonder how many of these preparations does he have for today up his sleeve. Yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to get caught. No prep, my. Let's go. Uh, A three, B four, move four. <laughs> And two, knight g6. Still thinking. He's still thinking. Yeah, rook f5 is yeah. tempo. It's nothing. What else could he be thinking about? I think he's thinking about the plan more yeah. so than the moves. Exactly. So the the moves. setup is crucial here, right. whether he plays queen d2 or knight d3 Where's or rook f2. Is... Which move order? Where goes what? Yeah. And he plays a5. a5. So Purple he feels light. the need to gain even further space on the queen side and not allow any b5s in the future. Right. Stop in expansion. Now, black can still play b5. And after Ampassant, mm. you could play b5 later, but it extremely weakens the a-pawn. So yeah. It's unnecessary to do. Not necessary at all. The question is, what does black do? What setup do we want? So now Liam's going to go into think here. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Queen d7, bro. Simple. Rook e8. Maybe. Might even see a reroute like this, like D8 to 96 to F4, and maybe even play C5. No, no, you can't push the C pawn, at least not right now. Knight D5. D5. That, oh, that some... looks like a lovely spot for the knight. And yeah, you already you. see knight for there on F6. Oh man, you know, I don't let me get too close to you. 93, 93. I'm, I'm chilling. The knight's about to chill there. He did this one though. I wanted oh. to do that. He didn't want to trade. Oh, yeah, he could just take and do it again. That's why. Hmm. Yeah, you just take, and, and then when you take back with this knight, he goes at 97 again and trades everything off. So he went with this knight. Now queen f3 is interesting. And g3, h4, h5. f6, there it is. Oh, man, here we go. f6. It's either going to be real good or real bad. F6, G3, there it is, stopping F4, but I think this is a huge idea. H4, H5, and the knight sits here, but maybe he reroutes. Like he's like, he wants you to play this. Yeah, it looks passive, but you're right that the knight could maneuver its way back toward G5. Yeah, and then the queen comes in H3. So you actually need to be careful of doing this idea. Uh, this knight is cool, but it needs to be better placed. Maybe just queen H5. H4, I get it. I get it, but you are going to push your man's right into you. You are going to push him right where he wants to go. Maybe just expanding and uh, keeping the option open. I don't have to play it mm -hmm. right now. I don't have to play it right now. <laughs> He's getting ready for it. He's getting ready for the reroute. Knight h8. And... Do you think white will simply leave the pot on h4 so that the knight doesn't have where to jump to after knight f7? I 100% believe that. Yes, I do. I think he's going to leave it here because of that main reason of knight. This, knight, this g5 knight is actually, I mean, now he's just there for real. You can't kick him away. So 
definitely have to keep this here. But the question is, how do we activate the rest of the pieces for white? I mean, maybe a K3 is strange, but it does hit this. I wonder what the engine thinks. Moves our knight d2, which makes sense, but I don't know where we're really going from there. And then rook f2 and queen d2. Yeah, you're just playing chess here. You're trying to improve the position. So this is mm -hmm. uh, all we can really do is try to improve and capitalize on a mistake from black. Queen d2. I think solid. Like, it's just so solid. Yeah, it feels like uh, it is hard to break through Black's defense. At the same time, for for Le, it's just going to be a bit of a, you need to stay defensive and passive for the majority of this game. Yeah, and just sit and hold. And, and that's very yeah. hard to do sometimes. It's just sitting and waiting and doing mm -hmm. nothing. But doing nothing, I think Kramnik says, you have to learn how to do nothing very good. And yeah. of course, that's uh, what he's doing here, doing nothing very good. Just moving pieces around, improving. Knight h8, got it to a better square. Maybe knight d6, trade off one of your knights. Yeah, there it is. Trade off one of your knights here. And he's it's doing the same. It's important, yeah, to offer those peace trades uh, when you're uh, with the one with less space. So those few, the, the more pieces you have for less space, the harder it gets to shuffle mm. them around and move. Yeah, I, I like white because of the space. I mean, the initiative you feels like you have, but it's really nothing. I mean, everything black's just solid. Nice. Their pieces look great. I think this could uh, be drawn. Unless, I mean, obviously time gets very low. Things happen in low time. Yeah. But, you know. Well, we don't mind draws here because, as we mentioned before, this is a knockout format. Every match consists of one and only one game. But if it's a draw, we get to see a second game, a tiebreaker, or even a third game, a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker. Mm, tiebreaker of the tiebreaker. And now we have an advantage plus two. He lost what? something. He's younger pawn. I can oh. take that. Wait, he just played knight to c6, ignoring takes the, F6. the double f file rooks and the, the pin on the g file. How? He How dropped did the he not... there, Let's see the oh reaction. My. Oh my. Nothing. Oh, yeah, a little shake. A little yeah. bit of a shake. A little scratch his nose head. there. Oof. Just when we thought that he was bulletproof with his mm -hmm. defense. He jumped off the deep end. And yeah. All the way down with a smile. Rick takes F6. Is. That's it. That's a problem. I'm about to take another pawn. You might have to play H5. It was just played. Queen g5, queen e7, and rook f5. Mm -hmm. Or rook g6, I mean, same thing. Goodness me, what was a tough one. But it just goes yeah. to show that even if you're a grandmaster, being passive, learning how to do nothing, as Gramling said, <laughs> is not that simple. It's not. And nothing did not work out there. I mean, he tried. He made some moves. He was doing well. But the pressure, which I was saying, why just has better pieces? I mean, yeah. same pieces. Why mine just look better than yours? And it worked out, right? One blunder from Black, and the game is literally virtually over here. As you see, the engine's like, yeah, it's plus three, and I'm not up a piece, right? So I am up a pawn here, which is H5 is going to hang too as well in many cases. E5 is hanging. But we do get some pawns back, and this is possible for draw chances, but it is uh, it, it, it difficult. Queen E7 was played. Now we have Rook G7 or Rook G6 or F5 is best. Mm -hmm. and we probably take and hit H5 and E5. So like literally just losing everything. Maybe Rook F5, because Rook F5 hits the pawn, even if yeah. you try to defend it. True. Yeah, it's Rook such G6. a tough one. You're already down a pawn, and the second one might fall on the fifth rank. Rook G6 works, too. I like Rook F5 a little better. Well. Oh, that must have been such a tough moment for, for Liam when when he blundered the pawn on f6 because it was a basic pattern but he had to be defending for so long that he just collapsed in that one moment it wasn't a difficult one to see but it was just a very prolonged passive defensive position and now actually after uh queen e oh there it is rook f5 okay play rook takes g5 should be played right not pawn takes don't do pawn takes is he gonna do pawn takes he might G6? do pawn takes. Like, I, right, G6. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking G6. Rook F6, King G7. Mm -hmm. Wow, he's really thinking about this one. That's interesting to me. I'm not even going to lie. He's considering whether to take with the rook or the pawn because both have pros and cons. He takes with the pawn, indeed. He does. He takes with the pawn. That's baffling. I'm not even going to lie. That is a baffling move. 
Wow, really? So let me see. Yeah, Rook Takes was by far a whole point better than Pawn wow. Takes. Whole point. I just wanted to see if we were missing anything, and it's not. We yeah. weren't. He just wanted to be clever, I think. He wanted to be Maybe like... Maybe uh, he overthought it. Rook Takes G5. Rook Takes G5. He took with the Pawn. And G6, Rook F6, King G7. Like, what do I, I don't know. I don't know what he did, what he was doing here. I really don't. But this is uh, interesting, though. Maybe G4, and then you go here. I guess. I guess it's winning. It's a level pawn. It's what matters. It's still a tough one, even if Rook takes G5 was even stronger. Doesn't make it uh, much easier for Grandmaster Lek Wang Liam yeah. with the black pieces to try to hold on. Yep, h takes g5 on the board here, and Lamb with the trying to figure out what to do, actually. Rook f8? No, I just take him win, right? Well, maybe, maybe. This is kind of complicated, actually. Rook f8? No, I can just go up, maybe. Yeah, I think this is probably not it. But g6 is standard. Rook f6, king g7. This defends the pawn. I can go g4 if takes king g3. And I take, and I mean, yeah, that's cool. Oh, I have rookie six, don't I? That's the idea. Yeah. G6, rook here, king G7, rookie six. Mm -hmm. And maybe I just take the e-pawn. And then that, I'm going to take, I'm connecting to that. He wanted to do it this row. I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. Very nice. Very nice. Let me check it's... it with the engine and see what they think. Yeah. G6, king of G6 uh -huh. here, here. Rook E6, that's correct. King F7. Ah, but then he could just go. Oh, this is just the engine. Then you go King H3. Man, this is this is a long game. <laughs> this is gonna be a very long it game. It is. It is. <laughs> it it takes patience to convert these, but unfortunately for Liam, it is gonna be a very painful end game to play. He plays, he plays Rook F8. I didn't think this was working. You see, the engine doesn't either. Like this just doesn't yeah. work. We just win, but how? Maybe. What he wants is take and king h3, and we just play g6 and g4, and you're actually not really breaking through. Even though you're winning, you might got a pawn, but it's very hard, very hard. So the question is, how do we win right now? Is g6 a move? 97. No, it, I mean, g6 takes the 97. King h3, g6 now. This is a reverse the move order here. Rook f6, take, take, king f7. I don't know. I don't know. It's plus five here, bro. Plus five. <laughs> G3, G6 takes, takes, and G4. And yeah, G4 is just a winning endgame. It's literally just taking G4 is a completely winning endgame. But it does take time. Like, you have to... You can't actually get cross with the king, so you might have to come this way and play D4. Yeah, I goal. guess from Liam's perspective, he thought, you know, I'm already down a pawn. Uh, things right. are bad. Things have gone bad. This may, might give me the best practical chance. 100%. I actually thought that here, too. It was one of my ideas. It was a Rook F8. With that same idea here, it ends just, like, laughing at us, right? But Rook F8 did seem that way. Like, it's, I mean, okay, I'm down a pawn. You're going to have yeah. to beat me in this endgame. But it's not yeah. as clear as you think it is, even though the eval bar says exactly it's very clear. Oh, you're down a whole Rook. But, I mean, he has to figure this out. He has to still yeah, he does have to figure it out. G4, it's not G4. that simple um, to break through G4. Uh, he can push, but as you mentioned, there is no entry square there for the broke. king. Right, He'll so have, have to, to turn like his around. attention toward the center and try to push d4. Yep. Only way. Only way. He plays g4. There was a trade, king f3, and king here, and played d4. Only plan, only activity. b5 might be a shot. No, that just is a pawn. Yeah, this is another pawn. Hmm. Opposant. Right. Opposant. Yeah, I guess he'll have to just try to hold on here with passive moves. Maybe knight jumps back and forth, keep the king on e6. Right. Yeah, just back and forth. This is the hardest part of chess right here is when you're on the losing end of this and you just got to shuffle, you know, shuffling and trying to defend. Uh, it feels good when you're actually able to hold a draw, but here, this is uh, very rough, especially after d4 break is going to threaten d5 as well. Yeah, so that's no an here. issue. Yeah, and we're going to play e5, put the king on e4, maybe play e6 at some point, get the knight around. Everything's winning. Everything with plus seven now, as the engine says. This yeah, the evaluation board is just completely it's overtaken respected. by White's advantage. Obliterated. Um, 
It's hard. And the blunder itself was a very simple one. It's not a mistake that grandmasters normally do. It was, well, well, we were emphasizing that he had been under pressure for many, many, many moves. It's not a one move blunder, but it kind of builds up when you're under pressure and under uh, an attack and initiative of your opponent for a long time that right. you can make very simple mistakes. Carrillo had a lot of moves too as well. In fact, the problem here was if you moved like king h7 or h8, right? We were threatening knight takes e5 and mm. getting the two rooks for the queen. So yeah. in fact, what he needed to play was queen c6. This was the only move in his position. He thought knight f6 was going to do it, but that dropped the pawn. Yeah. And move. All right, and, that, and then that was it. That was literally it. And now we got this live position here, d4 on the board. Wow, sacrificing the pawn. Dang. I mean, your position is so good, you can do that? Like, that is so nice. King F3, you can just sack this pawn, and it's fine. So he doesn't want to go back. And that's with check, too. Like, to check, G4? You know I mean? yeah, that's what I thought, too, right? Sheesh. Yeah, I, I, I thought he, he will go back oh, and Oh, wait, no, it's, like, it's his move, right? Oh, it's his yeah. move. Yeah, he can still oh, play King G4. I was like, I oh, that, man, like, wait, he did actually sacrifice the pawn? What is this? He's that's so brave. Told. Yeah, I okay. would not. <laughs> refresh. Okay, there it is, King G4. Okay, he guarded the pawn. Okay. Yeah, that that this seems, seems more right. on the right. safe Check side. Here he takes on e4, and if king e3, how is this winning, right? So king g4 defends the pawn. But again, now, now um, how do we actually... This is, it's going to be Zugzwang, I think. I think we Zugzwang him here. So we got to mm. stay here for a little bit. He has to deal with this, though, but he doesn't have to deal with it right now. Maybe he could play c6. Yeah, he only has... This is Zugzwang. He doesn't have many positions, many moves. He doesn't have any moves. He also doesn't have any time. You know, yeah, it's hard time. when you are down on material and on time. There's nothing going right for you in this game. He doesn't have any time. Tier 4. He played 95 next. I like that he's using his time, though. I mean, didn't instantly move there. King F4 was a, a very quick move. But he, he thought, I, I mean, I like that he really used his time there. Played d5 for shifting the knight, put the king in the center of the board is an easy one. Well, he has knight f7. Okay, whatever. So that's kind of annoying. Knight e5 then to bring the knight in. Ooh, still got to be, still got to be careful. Wow. Still got to be careful here. Knight e5 takes, 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 king here, knight takes. Oh, man, it's zeros. It's zeros. Oh, Please. my goodness. And it's just when I say you got to be careful here, right? You have to be careful. Uh, yeah. But You need to be precise. Uh, 95 is a check. both of them. Oh, no, he stepped into it. No, it's probably Maybe King he here. wanted to. He wanted to actually though. give up the G pawn for the D pawn, but now King E4 guards the pawn and the pawn yeah. on G6. There it is. You cannot save. But he plays Knight of Seven, though. I mean, this is steel. Like you have to be careful. How is this? What a tactical in game. Knight takes. I go Knight of Seven. I get you a G pawn, and we could mm. be drawing this, my guy. So how do you do this? Oh my goodness. I mean, he has nine seconds. How do you do this, King? F4, he goes back. What is that? All right, let me turn the engine on. What is it? Takes knight of seven, king f5. You just go king f5. If king, well, why can't he go and here? Then king oh, king f6? f6. I guess we're oh, winning. Oh, king f6. Yeah, yeah I guess so we're winning. So he gives there. a I guess check, but now this is two extra pawns. pawns. King e6 should do it. Oh, f4. King e6, what was wrong with that? Maybe knight e4. So king f4, knight here and here, and probably pushing. Knight e5 could do it too. There it is. Two seconds, one second, three seconds. Yeah, and the pawn is running. I think this will be resignation. Next move. Yeah, he's going oh, to he's still six. trying to stop off. them. King G5. No checks. Ah, oh, but he goes here. <laughs> like, why is he fighting me so hard, man? Fighting me so hard to the death here. D6. Yeah, now the pawns are just way too powerful. It's king d7 there. So he went here with knight f5. And then g7. Two seconds. Knight f5. And probably and this is the moment it. where Le will resign. For oh, real win. What wins. a game in terms of how hard chess is really. That's what many of you said in the chat. And it's so true. It felt like... It felt like the Vietnamese grandmaster fought so hard to try to hold things together, and yet he he failed to to guard what seemed like 
a simple enough threat to prevent, but it wasn't that simple. He blundered. He blundered after the on, under the pressure of Absolutely. the position and the time as well. Uh, tough, very tough. Kirill being the underdog in that matchup actually came out on top. So he's got a, a few things to say, but now he's going to take on Chef Jeff, who cooked <laughs> up something very nasty in that last game. So I am definitely afraid for Kirill. But at the same time, if he just you know stays calm, maybe he's able to to have an upset against Chef Jeff. And play as fast as Jeffrey, because Jeffrey didn't spend a single second of his time uh, in the previous game. We're going to take a quick break, and then we are back with the semifinals of today's Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Don't go anywhere, because Hikaru will be back to face Hans Niemann. Welcome back, everyone, to the Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. This is already the, the semifinals, and we will see Hikaru Nakamura trying to knock out Hans Niemann. James, you know Hikaru very well. I think I know Hikaru very well, too. But do we know Hans well enough to see if he can do this? Can he upset mm. the biggest favorite of this tournament? In fact, I do shout out to Big Hans, right? I messaged him the other day on Instagram, right? I was talking to him. So, you oh. know, Hans is uh, oh. my guy. Hans out here working. <laughs> but definitely Nakamura is uh, well known. He's just, uh, I mean, you you say the name, people run and they hide the kids, right? It's scary. Very, very scary over the board. <laughs> this man is a beast. We already know what Hikaru can do. And Hans is uh, relentlessly working, so he does have a shot. But again, he's going to have to bring his absolute best against one of the absolute best, Hikaru. Yeah, this this is the challenge ahead of Hans. He's got the white pieces because he finished first in yesterday's Swiss tournament to qualify to today as the top seed. So he has the white pieces because of that. And it's a one-game match. Whoever wins this game qualifies to the final. That's it. And they qualify for the final H6 from Icaro here again. Now, this is in early G5 already because of the early castling from white. 
So G5 actually is a move that can be played in these lines in the X castle. So nobody's going for the G5 at all. This is a very aggressive chess here. But he said, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to play fast and quickly and confidently. Bishop E6, pre-move, rookie 6 there. Kind of like just trying to blitz him on a clock. Look at the instant moves here, like he's been here before. Yeah, it's a 10-minute game with two-second increment, but Hikaru is gaining time instead of spending time. Kind of the Jeffrey way that we have seen in the previous match of Jeffrey Zhang. Also, Hans is very fast, to be fair. Yeah, oh, definitely. Hans is definitely extremely fast, as we know, guys. So uh, we will see. You know, he's put on a show. He made it this far, qualified. Now he said he's playing um, the strongest in the field right now. Let's see, Carl Rook A1. Like this move on takes. And maybe using, um, this reminds me of a, is it Karpov? There's a Karpov game like this with Bishop B2, Rook A3. Rook here is that Al Eliakin. It's one of the Oh, other. I, I know which one you mean. Yes. Yeah, with the Rook on A3 and doubling and et cetera, and then finally taking. Do you think so that's what Hans is thinking too, about too? He's like recalling this. his analysis of Karpov's <laughs> best games. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But of course, here it is a little bit different. Now we just have to trade the bishop soft. And this just seems very equal, and probably a D5 is going to be blundering. Very equal position. Takes pawn takes. It's a lot of pawns in the center there. Yeah, he takes with the rook. I expected a pawn capture too. Rookie A, very quick move. I don't know, knight a5? No, that's not doing anything, really. Yeah, with the rook on e3, one. you need to bring it back first to e1 to then try to double on the a file. And then, yeah, knight a5. Now rook takes a double. Could be very possible. Yeah, and even if there's a trade on a5 later with the rooks, he could consider taking with the pawn. With a pass. Mm. Pass pawn, chat. Queen c8 from Ikaru. Interesting. What are you supposed to do with C7 pawn as black in this line? That's a great question. In fact, I mean, many in all openings, in fact, no matter what opening it is, usually a C pawn, usually at some point C6 or C5. But here, and it doesn't need to do anything right now. You don't need to commit it so early. And you can't even do anything on C5 yet. It's very good to understand. This is a Karpov. Really playing, I like the Karpovian Petrosian <laughs> style. Yeah. Like King H2, Knight G1, G3, F4. This was a Karpov. You've seen him do this a lot. This is very nice. You could play this way, but it's very prophylactic. Also, rig G1, G4, G5, however you want to do it. I would love to see that. I would love to see Hans going for something crazy. He might opt for the more strategic and solid way of continuing like knight A5. Oh, but yeah, G4, nice. man, that would be wild. Yeah, I'm a fan of it. Rig G1, G4, G5, and G6, we have knight H4. I mean, this stuff's weak. And if you don't play G6, you play G5, right? Well, maybe he plays G5 against G4. So that's probably why. We won't be able to get the knight here to uh, have five in time. Interesting. Takes, takes. And do we just double on the file? Just take the A file? Possible. Possible. Yeah, it not a, an easy position for Hikaru, but it is solid. So it's also not easy to to do more than just the slight edge. It It is very comfortable from White's perspective, for sure, to have the A file, especially the only open file. Right. It's also very rare, very, very rare that uh, you're able to just like crush Hikaru in games where I've seen it in Title Tuesday. Yesterday, he didn't do so well, but he mm -hmm. still made it to the final, which is what I mean, we're uh, today the knockout. But here, yeah. you know, if you don't get a very big advantage, a lot of times he's able to grind out games and and grind and literally be able to win, like in positions where you shouldn't have won. Hans did this yesterday, too, as well, though. He has a few positions where he had no business winning but ended up winning the position. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's honestly a very level game for both parties. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I'm curious to see if what you mentioned, can, can Hikari do it even from this position where it feels like he is holding everything cl close and together and, and defended. There is no, um, there's no big threats from White, but can he right. do more than that? Can he get more than a draw? Absolutely. I think here, uh, Hans actually is for choice. If you want, like, who would you rather take here? Well, of course, Black's, all of his pieces aren't even off the seventh rank, right? So, of course, we do have uh, our, our choice for, for White, but Black has a very nice hold on the center. In fact, one pawn structure structures are very good to understand the skeleton pawn structures. This pawn structure with the pawn on C6 and E5 controls literally like the entire center, right? Because you got a pawn this, this, you got a pawn on one, and you also have influence here. So, like, three squares where you can't really do much about. 
Maybe you could play d4, but that makes b4 weak after a capture. And also e4. I mean, it's, it's difficult. You also go up to c4 square. So lots of things to think about. Very level position. I really like knight h4, f5 for white. I like those kind of knight maneuvers, and it feels like Hikaru is also re ready to do a similar knight maneuver. But as you are pointing out, that f7 pawn could be fragile after after rook a7, but then rook b7, knight e6 also can block the diagonal. So uh, there's options for white, but it feels like Hikaru always has a response. And he does, absolutely. And c4, there's a small break. And he's, he's going for it. C4 on the board. If pawn takes, that is going to hang a pawn if you take with anything other than the queen. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to take with the queen, which uh, you have a weak one. I have a weak one. We both have weak pawns. And it's played. And what happens next? Rook B1. Hmm. Yeah, this is not, uh, I mean, this is just equal, right? This is super equal. Super equal. It's, you, I don't think you beat Hikaru in this position 10 times out of 10 games, you know, right? It's it's, yeah, uh, it's a one time out of 10 games. Like, you know, one time out of 10 games is going to be hard to think. He Carl in these type of positions, guys, like it's very, very equal. He covers a position at this stuff. True. And he his only detectable weakness that can be attacked is a C6 pawn, but and so is the B4 pawn. So he's counter attacking on the B file. Right. Yeah, there's it's not it's not a complicated position. It's not razor sharp. It's very simple weaknesses for both. These are going to um, definitely uh, uh, offset each other. This B4 pawn feels a little bit weaker than C6 now at this point. Because the yeah, rook is defending. Sure. Rook here. Rook here. Take, 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 take. And you want to draw, bro? <laughs> well, if this game is a draw, we're going to be happy. Because that will mean that they will have to play again yeah. and again yeah, <laughs> until and there's no draw. <laughs> Exactly. But as the time gets lower, I think Hans probably wants to do it now because as the time gets lower, he knows Hikaru is just stronger there. That's where he, he he's uh, better at, actually, as the time is lower. So it, it could be problematic. So Hans has to make the best of this position. But if it's a draw, it's a draw, and you take your chances where you can. Okay, yeah. six takes and takes. I think they are heading toward that line. I don't really see any other alternatives for white. And as you pointed out, uh, the B4 pawn has become a more of an issue than the C6 pawn at this rate, so he probably has to go for the liquidation. Yeah, because B4, I mean, you could go the passive route, but I mean, that's really passive, and you're just holding the pawn, and if you're not playing B5, then what is it? Interesting. Very balanced in A6, terms of time management, there it is. too. Work to A6. Yeah, Hikaru has to go for it too because the pawn on c6 will be captured. I think after queen takes b4 too, I actually slightly prefer white because of the d pawn. Is true. Weak. Like, actually, how do you even defend that? So there is only probably one line that is correct, but what is it? Takes, takes, takes. I take this way. Oh, maybe you go rook d8. So what if I take this way then? I hit it twice. Takes, takes. I don't know. Are you losing a pawn or do you just get one back? How do you, uh, let me kill the engine. I'm very curious. Wow. You do not take the pawn at all. What? You do not? You don't take the pawn. And Wait, he what? doesn't take, he plays the best move, which is 96. This is why Icaro is 2800. Like 96 is the best move. The knight e6. Let him take the pawn here. But how then... do you defend this now? You still don't defend it. It's so what's crazy. the engine's point? What's the difference Not if now white takes on c6? Yeah, I'm about to see right now. We're about to see. It. We're about to see. <laughs> take, takes, takes. Oh, takes, he takes, takes on b4. Now he takes. And that queen is guarding b6. the queen b6. is guarding, right. There's no queen trade. Oh. There's that no was the key. Trade. To keep yeah. the queens on the board. You trade the pawns, the but on. not the queens. Right, right. You have to keep the queens on. Yeah, that was it. Because we, we highlighted d6 was very, mm -hmm. very difficult to, to defend. And he finds a way to do it. The 2800 route and also knight e6 putting the knight on a very strong square knight f4 also as well and this is where i talk about where hikaru just out of nowhere your position was good and then how did you lose from an equal position right it hurt it hurts because knight f4 is very strong you don't have the counterpart of knight f5 right i mentioned earlier about the gary kasparov you put a knight on f4 it wins games right a lot of times it can win games get a knight on f4 rook f2 is going or c7 is a threat i think if knight f4 now rook c7 rook f8 rook c8 Trade hmm. them, check, draw, draw, perpetual, perpetual. 
I'm also yeah. threatening you for CA maybe as a professional as well. But um, if uh, if you move the knight. I also like rook c6 here. I mean, there's some threats. Hans is tricky. Tricky Hans. Rook d8, rook c8. Maybe. Yeah, I like queen d7 to play it this active, not worry queen about knight Hans. f4. It's a very tricky move. I like this move a lot, queen d7. Very tricky. I mean, this is now very annoying. But you have rook d8. Do I go queen e7 there? I could. Very possible. Yeah, and then the knight is tied down to the defense of the d8 rook. I do like it. And I also have watched this and a rook c7 after queen e7. If you go rook d8, queen oh, e7, and then I get nice. rook c7 in. The knight takes yeah. take d8, and then yeah, you get the piece too. So that would be cute. beautiful. A little nice little attack. But we got rook f8 there. Queen b6. Interesting. So he's attacking the f2 pawn. That was a great move. That was a great move. Wait, wait, d4. Uh, now it's too much. And if it don't work, you're losing. So let's not even do that. Let's just play something good. Rook c2, king g1. But if king g1, then knight f4, and he's oh, threatening yeah, you're right. the knight yeah. fork. So rook c2 yeah. is safer. Not today. Right, so rook c2 defends. <laughs> rook c2 defends. Very solid, but team. still tense position. Absolutely. Absolutely here. Ikaru. Uh, they have four minutes, 30 seconds here. Hans with a little bit more time, just about a minute more. Not too much. Two second increment. I wonder if Hikaru still finds ways in which he could keep it somewhat complex and and not head toward the draw because it feels like he is really trying to to keep it as complex and as uh options are open Hans offered position. a draw Hans oh, offers did? a draw Rook C2 okay, well, I see draw offer in chat here in chess.com Hans offers a draw I said you want to draw bro we can go to the next round of games you want to draw, but that shows a little bit of confidence there, I think, in the, uh, okay, you want to go to the faster time control, let's do it, bro. And you get white, you know, like yeah. he offers the draw. So, you know, it's a big boss move there from Hans. Very big boss move. I would be terrified to offer a draw to Hikaru. And I got I white here, like... I'm trying to press. I got white, like, wait, hold on, man, I'm trying I to know. press. And also, just imagine if it's refused, and then you feel like, oh, shoot, maybe <laughs> I wasn't, like, evaluating the position well enough. This, does right. he see chances where there's none, I thought? Oh, hey, Carlos says, draw nothing, big fella. I ain't drawing anything. And Rook takes D8. They trade the queens. But, I mean, <laughs> why did he decline the draw? <laughs> I don't know. Now he's down two minutes, and it feels Bro. like... White's pieces are more active. Oh, man. I guess he's going to get the king here in time. Knight h4, king f7. Oh, wait a second. Knight f5? You're not there in time. Don't don't mess this up. And then you're going to be molding. Knight d4. <laughs> and molding like, oh, man. Like, you should have taken that draw, bro. Knight d4, knight f5. So I think knight d4 stops. But then rook c7. Oh, rook c7. I'm on the seventh rank. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, usually you, you, you take a draw, right, you know, in the worst position. He wasn't worse, but now I think he is slightly, right? I mean, you got to be slightly worse here with the rook on the seventh rank and an active knight. Um, yeah. King gave seven though. to guard a g6 square. Very strong move. And the knight is actually, I'm dominating your knight. That's kind of strange. And if you go here, you double the pawns. But, I mean, I always have an active rook being behind it. G3 maybe with f4. D5, that's a strong now move. Now d5. Very strong. King g2. H5, g4? Take, take, take. He's trying to he's trying to push forward. He's trying to push forward. With King h6, g5. Yeah, he's still I mean, playing for a win. He, he is. He's playing for a win. He's playing for a win. He's playing for a win. He's playing for a win all the way. And I mean, yeah. it, back in the old days, too, you would see this, like in the uh, Capablanca days. Like they would play this stuff all the way out anyway. <laughs> I, True. You're supposed to play it out, really, but it's. Uh, Man. Yeah, but it's it feels hard. like because of the format, so it's knockout That's and true. it's a one game match. Hikaru could have just accepted the draw, take the next game with less time and the white pieces. Right, what a bold move, right? Because he's down time. You're down yeah. two minutes. Like, you know, it'd be different if you up two minutes, right? 
He's shaking his more. head slightly now, but mm. I don't think it's because of the position in terms of any danger for him, which is maybe that he doesn't really have winning chances. Yeah, he's <laughs> shaking his head. Ah, I'm not winning, chat. <laughs> I threw, chat. I threw. <laughs> <laughs> threw so hard. I had a 5, 96, 93. He got 3, 95. Ninety-seven now and draw. He okay, a they draw, took a draw. Back. Okay, okay, there it is. They Makes took a little sense. draw ski. He took yeah. a little draw ski there. So Hikaru tried, but there was no way of getting through. If anything, White had the more active pieces, so Hikaru had to be precise. Right. Well, that that is good news. We yeah, know we that if it's a draw, we get to see even more chess with less time. Three plus two blitz is uh -oh. coming up next. Hikaru with the white pieces this time. Oh, he didn't play his B3 stuff. I thought that's what oh. he was playing. He scores very high with that. Heavily. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess but maybe uh, he thought that that's what Hans is expecting the that's most. That's true. Like, Hans is too good for that. So <laughs> we have this here. Takes, takes. The Taras. Bishop D6. Yeah. Bishops look good. Iso pawn. Bishop back. Yeah. I we like these positions. a couple of these structures today. The isolated yeah. pawn. Actually, but no. Black has the Iso pawn. So having this is fun, but you gotta have it. It has to be correct. You have to like go bishop e six. This pawn's hanging. Is he gonna give it up? He does. Bishop e six. He goes defend it. Now b three. A bit laid, but still. Yeah, delayed b three. Delayed <laughs> Larson system from Ricardo. Oh uh, yeah, this is just fine for White. I think it's a completely fine. Ricky one, bishop d3, bishop b1, knight b4, rookie one, e4. I guess it's very nice stuff. Very nice. So I like this from White's point of view, but especially with the ISO pawn, definitely like White's point of view. It's c1. Yeah, let's see how Hans will set up his pieces. He's bringing the rook to d8. The other rook can come to e8. Chat says Hans scores 20% better when he drinks an entire water bottle during a game. Wow. That's the statistic <laughs> show. That's what the stats say. Okay, cool, cool, bro, cool. Good to know. It does Good to know. feel like he he is doing well in terms of the percentage the water has been consumed from that <laughs> gigantic bottle. It's it's not a small it was, one. Was, that was a big bottle, bro. Exactly. Like, <laughs> is this water? Excuse me. Let me check that bottle, sir. Let me check that bottle. Knight to B1. Getting out of the way, exposing the bishop line here. Your bishop is worse. Yes, Listing so Hikaru it... with white is tough. Absolutely. Of course, Oof. he scores over 60% with white. Because in blitz games is what it showed. Yeah, and uh, I guess that's the percentage against the, some of the strongest players in yeah, the world. Yeah, in the world. But... Exactly. I can think about that. Like <laughs> the, the strongest players in the world. It's like 60% over with white. <laughs> yeah. Insane. Might be one. So Hans is spending quite some time here, but this is a blitz game. You don't really yeah. have that much time to spend. And you know, here's the best move. The engine says, sacrifice the pawn to open the bishop. Wow. B4. Will he do that? I would that would probably be crazy. Play. And then this one, this is probably another move I would have played to get rid of the bishop because yeah. of uh, how strong it is. We can't a lot more human. Bishop. Yeah, right. definitely. And now I can play D4 without giving it up. So he's getting rid of Hikaru's dangerous fianca oh, to Bishop. Well, well he thought he's game? getting rid, we'll rid of it. Could this be a repetition of moves or simply just trading on a different square? I'm thinking, is he gonna sack the exchange? No, you lose. don't lose. don't <laughs> do that. Like, what are you doing? He's there thinking about it. This is <laughs> He's thinking Down about to it. mid oh. and a half, but he plays bishop d6 eventually. They trade on d6. He's thinking now whether to take the rook or the queen. Takes and queen to d4 and rook d1 next. There it is. Queen d4 centralized, rook d1. That's annoying. It's trying to bait me into play f3. But it's not really that bad. But then every time we see f3, maybe let's just not do that. Let's put the bishop on f3 or d3 maybe. Something similar. This knight is annoying. Though. We got to get rid of it. Knight c3? Yeah. Yeah, you it would not make sense to break the knight back. Uh, and he has just played knight to c3. Yeah, we gotta get rid of that. 
knight g5 with knight e6 he wants to play d4 and get rid of it his way shoot that is super strong bishop g4 and f5 but then bishop f3 knight e6 queen d3 d4 take take rook d1 allowing knight e6 allowing it Maybe his idea is that after knight e6, if he can place the queen, let's say, on b4, like if I'm not blundering it, then uh, uh, there's an pressure on the rook on d6. And, and there it is. It's losing. Oh, it is a blunder. It's not a blunder. It's a blunder. What? Has How? He, played it? he did. The... It's on the board. Is it d4? Oh. It is. It's a oh. blunder? How is it a blunder? I don't so understand. How takes... is it such a blunder? Okay, oh. what happens on takes? Knight takes d4. Why can't I just take this? Is this Queen some... g5. Oh my oh goodness. My. This hits mate. Threatening and the rook. Oh. G2 and the c1 the rook at the same time. Oh my goodness. That's so hard. How and he finds he... it. It's on the board. 49 seconds on the clock. Plays pawn to d4. And he must see this. He definitely... If he... If he's sacrificing the pawn, it is because he sees the tactical <laughs> pattern with queen g5. Oh my goodness. What a moment. I was I was slightly worried when I suggested queen before, but when he kind of played it, I thought, okay, now he wouldn't blunder anything, so it's safe, right? Yeah. And he is uh, thinking now. Wow. Wow, what a combination. And you know who does a lot of puzzles just like Hikaru does? Is Hans. Hans was in the puzzle of, uh, battle stuff before the World Championship. Hans does these. All right, knight takes d4. Yeah. Now we got to go like bishop f1. Shoot. Oh, my goodness. You cannot take those. This is a minus three position. Minus three. Is there a knight f3 check? I would have to bishop f1 knight f3. I was going to oh say, because if you goodness. have a check on g6, then the queen is hanging on b4. Wow. Bishop g4. Goodness this game's me. over. This game's over. This is over. Let's see how... This is over right now. I don't know what it is. Is it without the engine? Check without to looking, D one because then the B four queen is hanging. Oh, you're right. Yeah, anything, any check. You're right, any check. Oh, he resigns. And Get he him out of here. resigns. Oh my goodness! What a game! Oh Hans my Zeman goodness! With the black pieces, beat Hikaru with thirty six seconds left on the clock. Let's just roll back, rewind what happened because queen to B four apparently was a blunder. D four winning move mm -mm -mm. and after knight takes he moved the bishop anywhere hit that boy with a checky pool what it do and after bishop takes it doesn't matter what you do rook takes d1 and you are done queen takes b4 the queen is gone that's it that's a wrap uh hikaru goes down and hans with a clutch win goodness wow. me hans Niemann. After winning yesterday's Swiss tournament, it felt like he he appeared at the top of the standings a bit out of the blue, but he is proving that he is number one seed today for a reason. He knocks out Hikaru Nakamura, qualifies to the final, and his opponent, we will still need to figure out who is going to face Hans, but as I didn't want to be Jeffrey's opponent, now I don't want to be Hans's opponent. Jeez. Right, I don't know who I want to... You know, I just, I'm going to just go home today, right? You know, who you want to fight... These guys are very strong. Hans taking out Hikaru. He's feeling like a big beast right now as he's going into the final. This has been an incredible upset. D4, finding that tactical pattern. We're going to take a very quick break to try to digest what we have just seen. And when we are back, we're going to see the second semifinal. And who will be Hans's opponent in the final match of today? Be right back.
just works over there. Just clock over here. You all win. He just beat me, man. We just played like three games. It's a four to one streak my way. Me and him actually learned around the same time. And, you know, it's been fun watching him grow. He's early on, he'll trade his queen off too. He doesn't mind losing his queen, but he uses his horses more. I be, I'm a little mad if you take my horses. Cause they, they the deadliest piece on the board. Everybody think it's the queen, but it's the horse. Cause you can't defend it. The Rapid Chess Championship is brought to you by Coinbase. Whether you're looking to make your first crypto purchase or you're an experienced trader, Coinbase has you covered. You can earn crypto by learning about crypto at Coinbase.com. Explore DeFi and Web3 with your Coinbase wallet. Get exclusive rewards when you spend with your Coinbase card and much, much more. Learn more at Coinbase.com slash chess and get $10 in Bitcoin when you sign up and verify your account. Check them out. Use the command sponsor or command Coinbase today and go to Coinbase.com to get that Bitcoin, baby. Welcome back everyone to the broadcast of the Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. This is our second semifinal here with a very focused in Zen mode, Jeffrey Zhang on the left side. Oh, I side. thought he was asleep. Jeffrey was taking a nap. <laughs> he's taking a nap. Chef Jeff, he's like, I got to cook up something. Let me take a nap. I feel like he's meditating over what home preparation he's going to launch at Kirill Alexeyenko because his match in the quarterfinals, Jeffrey crushed Vladimir Fedoseyev in a game that I think we will be analyzing and studying for a long time to learn how to beat super grandmasters in such a convincing and easy, seemingly very easy fashion. His next opponent is Kirill Alexeyenko, who eliminated Grandmaster Leko and Gliam. I wonder what opening we are going to see and if it's going to be, again, one of those preparations by Jeffrey, um, that is hard to face over the board. What do you think, James? What is your prediction? I think you should 100% fear anything that Jeffrey plays If he because of that right there. What he did to Fedeseev there is a lot. I mean, it really comes back to that preparation. How hard is he prepping? It's obvious he's prepping like a madman. And he plays C4. He didn't even play D4 this time as the game starts C4. Kirill, like, uh, I didn't expect that. I thought he was going to play D4. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what? C4, E5. Let's see. It should be four. I like this. I like the E4 line from Jeffrey. Oh, he didn't play it. But E4 there is more of a reverse um, Rosalimo. You're getting very nice attacks. Magnus had a crushing game against Vichy. I think back in like 2017 or 18. Why can't Z? But E4, mm -hmm. Knight C3, uh, and very nice. Bishop D3 and stuff like that. So very nice. Play Knight D5, though. Very playable. I can't believe Jeffrey already has spent one second. What what happened, James? Yeah, I mean, we you know, know him as prepped. the man who collects time. He he's nope. spending time. He spent two seconds there. The man's oh my not god! Yeah, he's he, so he needs slow. To go back. Yeah, he's so Jeffrey, slow. Jeffrey, he, he wake need to up. come better. He needs better preparation. But in all seriousness, this could be one of those preparations again because it's not the main line that he's playing, but. He certainly has picked this line 
for today for a reason. And Alexeyenko is already down a minute in an opening that's not new to him. This is strange. I don't know what's going on either, right? This D4, or what is this? Like, how do you respond to this? Do you take it? But then what's the follow-up? His queen's out there early. You are also thinking about what he did to Fedoseyev as well, right? So that's always in the back of your head of like, bro, that was crazy. I don't want to get caught nothing like that. So you have to really think here. And I actually don't even know what this theory could possibly be. I've never seen. I've never played this from either side. But D6 seems right. And that's what he played. D6 and E4 played quickly, not even thinking, here we go. This might be another one. Yeah, and as you said, d6 seems right, and yet the Vayashimbar is suggesting that maybe Black has slightly already made not a mistake, mistake, but an inaccurate move, something inaccurate. that is giving White an edge after only a few moves in right. the opening. Yeah, and I, I guess this uh this here is um just saying I have the whole center, which is a mini space, huge space advantage. I like c6, knight takes e7. Okay. And now a small thought from Jeffrey. Very small thought. This is not like him. Come on, Jeffrey. Yeah. Oh, man. Jeffrey using his time, guys. Don't be like Jeffrey. <laughs> we need seven. And uh, shoot, that actually is a good move, though. Like, Korea will be fine if some moves on you. He could threaten him to take, I think. 92. He don't care about none of that. So you're just going, what are you, you going to do if he takes? Maybe knight. So you just want to take with the queen or even before he will knight. not even take back. Might even take with the knight. Sacrifice Maybe. another pawn again. Because he already has the pair of bishops. See, he already has gotten the bishop yeah. of black to have right. the pair of bishops as a long term advantage. Right. Yeah, we got that bishop pair. He has some things to work with. Knight to c3. And what do we do now? Castles, Kirill thinking a lot, man. Hey, Jeffrey having that time edge. There it is. There's a castle, Bishop B2. We got to develop Already, our pieces. Yeah, a two-minute time advantage and only a few moves into the game. Bishop B2, Ricky H. Now D5, so he chooses to close the center. Um, Obviously, in... In general, for the bishops, you prefer open positions, but here I didn't. I don't think he wanted the e4 pawn to be hanging. If e takes d4, d4 were to happen, then or right. the three pieces of black were gonna be attacking that pawn. Right. This is a uh, king's Indian esque without the bishop, though. So this is not the greatest with the space advantage. It's already giving a plus one point four here. Huge space advantage for white. Without the dark square bishop, I also can play bishop g5 and pin you. I can castle and play f4, and everything is going to fall and collapse. Kirill spending, again, quite some time, and then pushing Only person C5. thinking is Kirill. He's yeah. the only one thinking. Kirill is the only one thinking. Castle's <laughs> 97. And Zhang is trying to go to the finals. That's all I'm saying. Chef Jeff is trying to punch his way forcefully to the finals. Up and time, if he does so, <laughs> we're going to have Hans waiting there for either Jeffrey or Kirill. Hans is waiting. Yeah, B6 on the board. And now how do we expand? If Bishop G5, you get hit with H6. You may even get hit with H6, G5, Knight G6, all in one move. So G5, H6, Bishop H4, G5, Bishop G3, and Knight G6. Rook B1. Knight G6 played immediately, saving some time. Rook E1, nice move. G3 and H4, H5 is a possible idea. Yeah, it feels like White could you, but White is already um, taking more space in the center, and you can push both on the king side and on the queen side. It's a very unique position to be in, where you can create attack and you can create an initiative in either flanks it feels like absolutely of course and after h6 here we do have what we call a hook pawn but it's hard to actually get to it you need g4 g5 in there which is very very risky also we can see f4 square that the knight can eventually pop into i do actually want to get f4 in myself mm -hmm. that's going to take some time g3 bishop f3 bishop g2 f4 long time h6 Stopping Bishop G5. 
let's see if Jeffrey will go for uh, the structure you suggested to try to aim for f4, g3, f4, or does he have a different plan here that he wants to play for? Two minutes of time advantage, more than two minutes, and the pair of bishops, although this is a very close position, so it's not the type of position where the pair of bishops would shine and be extremely powerful, um, but it is a lot when it comes to the space advantage in the center and, and the fact that it is in white's control when you open up the position, such as do you open up the B file? Do you try to push G3, F4? So very flexible. And it is black who has to be waiting and having a response to all of those. In fact, he plays A4. Bishop B7 almost instantly. It's almost like I didn't even see the move. It was so fast. It was almost like pre-moves. But A4 and Bishop D7 played very, very quickly here getting the last piece off the back rank. So he decides that he wants to start the battle on the queen side, pushing a4. Is he going to push a5 as well? It's a good question. He could play a5, but then maybe takes a b5. That's an interesting way of giving up a pawn. Ah. I like to this. then so a5. grab the a5 pawn later. Yeah, but maybe, so maybe you take b4 first, but then rook takes, then takes a5. I mean, you do have a pass pawn, and two of them, because we're going to get one, and then you still have the other. He's trying to break through. He didn't like this idea, and he's he's focused all over here. Time is actually getting closer. Time is actually getting a lot closer here. Yeah, it goes to show how complex this position is, that even though the bar is showing, oh, white is comfortable, white is better, but you cannot just claim you are better. You need to prove it with moves, with a plan. Right. Yeah, we need a good plan, exactly. We need a good plan here. And I don't know what the plan is now for why is he went for this. I want to play B5 and again, just go for G3, F4. Like, put the rook maybe, really have to prep it. Like, if I have a rook on the third rank, G3 and F4 is going to come at some point. But you have to you have to prep it, preparation, proper preparation there. And there's it, the G3, he might be going mm -hmm. for it. Maybe with a bishop F1, bishop G2, or bishop F3 to G2. Maybe move rook b2 after locking up on b5, put the rook on e2. And especially when you move in this rook, there's no pressure yeah. on the e-file. Yeah, we're going to lock it up first. Bishop e3 played, not worried about anything. He wants to attack this side of the board, keep both options open. It's incredible to see how he is playing on both flanks at the same time. So you sometimes worry that you can over uh, extend. You are you're having a bit too many things right. and too many things going on at the same time. But he's doing it in a very smart way. That if that pawn is taken on b4, then he will have the semi open b5, and he will shift his focus to the queen side. If it's not taken, he's happy continuing with g3 f4 pro probably. Absolutely, I love it. G3 f4 looks like a huge plan here, guys. F4 maybe even immediately um, without having to worry about anything. So if I go F4, oh yeah, the pawn's hanging, right? That's why I have to defend the pawn. He plays A5, playing on both sides once again. Don't care about nothing. Playing quickly too as well. Up a minute here against Korea. I really wonder what will Kirill come up with because as we have seen it, uh, it was it was his game actually against Grandmaster Lek Van Gliem. It's hard to be on the defensive side for so long, hard to be passive and not have any active plans to play for. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one thing that we can highlight is takes, takes, and pawn takes. He can win a pawn here, but that pawn is temporarily. So after rook a4, maybe you can do rook takes a5, queen a1, stuff like that. And then we're mm -hmm. going to pressure this pawn, maybe try to break through, and then eventually break through with the B pawn that we have that is passed. Very nice. He must be considering that as that's the most forcing line, even if it's not that promising. Yeah, what's the, what's the engine like? Let me see. Engine says rook C to B, queen D8, and C takes B4. Yeah, C takes B4. Which makes sense. He, he does play rook A to B, in fact. So that rook C to B. Do we just trade everything and play F4? No, Queen C2. We can just keep the, what do they say, uh, Grandmaster say, keep the tension. So we keep the tension here. Maybe by playing a move like A6, keep some tension here. But we want to keep tension, I think, on both. Or maybe, mm -hmm. mm, maybe we need to do something about this tension now. That's what Jeff is trying to figure out. He does have a minute and a half of time advantage that he can invest in this critical moment. A to B. 
He's thinking. Wow, Jeffrey using his time. I mean, hey, that's a new thing compared to what he did in this. Compared to what he did in that last game, the man's using his time. F3, interesting. What is the plan? Maybe locking the bishop in? But how do you get it? Uh, he's going to walk the king up? No. That's way too risky. I mean, I would do it, though, because it is that risky. But G4, <laughs> so like G4, this is a move. He's on H5 me. I mean, you're still locked in there, though. Takes, takes. Oh, there's like night. There, never mind. There's some tricks. You're getting made. No, I'm, I'm able to run away, but then that's hanging. I'm looking at so many things right now. <laughs> calculating you wise. You want to trap this bishop. Yeah, I want to trap this bishop so bad. But I looked at this. G4, H5, King F2, right? Takes, takes. And then like a move or something, right? Oh. Uh, but apparently, I, maybe you just take it now. It's probably the idea, and then H4. check. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Let me get it back. I'm in trouble. So King F2 is no good. Oh, he played something else. Two moves happened. Queen, queen A4, A4 and Queen A3. So he's playing He's playing over here. Mm -hmm. He's playing over here. Yeah, he's playing over here. So one pair of rooks have been traded. Uh, the B file is, is in Kirill's control, and the A file is in Jeffrey's. So he has the A file. I got the pair of bishops. Knight B5 is nice. That's a very strong move because to I'm going block to keep that the file. Yeah. Five. Right. And if you take, I'm, I'm pushing that boy. Mm -hmm. pushing it. That will be a pass pawn and pair of bishops again if you have right. to take home B5. <laughs> well, I mean, it was already, but like fully. But two bishops against two knights is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Two bishops against two knights here. And we may even have some sacrifices at some point. On d6 and bishop takes c5. Maybe not right now, but it's definitely a possibility. I think it's a little risky to go for this, but it is there. Queen a6 also highlights the fact that this pawn is extremely weak. What are these knights doing anyway? This is what we call the super, uh, what is it? Um, su uh, super, I always get that word wrong. Superfluous knights. So that's a weird word. That's a but, new word to me. Yeah, it's a Devereski. I, I call it a Devereski word. I saw it from Devereski's Indian manual. But it's, it's definitely, uh, these knights do the same thing, redundant knight in a way. Yeah, they're knight, trying to go to the same square. Yeah, same so square, it's a, yeah. Not and, and then here very helpful doing setup. It's very, these knights are very ugly. So he goes knight g5 and just says, that is not a move. h4? Is that why? It's tempting to push that knight back. He just plays queen a7, attack queen the rook. Seven. Uh oh, PC. Oh, you're not pinned. You're not really pinned. You can't move that bishop. Okay, okay, okay. I see. I see it. So, uh, what do we do then? I mean, H4 pushes him back. Like you really kind of can annoy him. H4, knight H7 he does make some weaknesses. Then queen C7 maybe takes, takes, takes. Interesting. Root D8 though, and time's getting lower for both. Jeffrey up. On clock, good time management. It is really hard when um, it's been both flanks where Jeffrey was making plans, ideas, threats. So eventually, it ended up being the queen side that is the main stage, and it is it is hard to regroup your pieces in a way that that you can counter everything immediately. The knights of black are busy on the king side. Knight h3. Ooh, knight h3 speaking is of these knights, check. hold up. Oh, uh, is there any real threat, though? Because I was like, is it just like it looks like black is doing something with those knights? Or do you think there's an actual threat? You know, I think if king g2, there was knight f4, weirdly enough. Ah, and then if you, take with, yeah, if you take with a pawn, I take back with my pawn. And then queen g5 mm. is nasty. It's like scary stuff. Right, I mean, immediately this happens. I mean, look at this mate, it's gross. Yeah. And then if, and if king f1, queen g1 mate. So this is like disgusting. He, I think he just spotted all of that. Kareel is gross for that. So king he h1, plays though. king h1 to yeah, not, like, not care any that. about of any of those checks, of course, yeah, stepping out of, of it. Exactly. None of that today. You're not about to cook me. You're not about to cook me, chef, chef. King h1. And what do we do now? Wow, black is definitely... Nice move, but no follow-up. Now, Jeffrey is just playing extremely precise, not giving any counter chances to his opponent. And we are talking about no. super grandmasters here. Yeah. And he he is dominating the board to such extent that he's suffocating mm. his opponent. 
it's just terrible for for black. I got the two bishops. You couldn't do anything with the knights. His time's getting lower. Jeffrey going to the finals. I'm calling it. Chef Jeff is going to win this game. Very good position. I mean, what do you? Your pawn's hanging right now. So we have the we have to either take the knight or move the bishop. But where are you going to move the bishop? C eight, E eight. Oh, so rough when you barely have any squares to go to, and your knights are also not well positioned. This is crazy. So as we mentioned, bishop takes b5. After c takes b5, that's a passed pawn for white supported by the two bishops. Right. Um, it, it's just simply that after bishop takes b5, you need to include queen takes e7. Do not play the bot as gambit, but that's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> yeah, and push, and then the bishop's defending this one. We got the rook coming around. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. King h1, and still thinking is Kirill. Jeffrey takes the sip. Game is over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, under a minute for Kareel. Under one what minute. a tough position. And F5. again, whoa, okay, he's trying. He's going all in. This reminds me of who did that. Bishop takes h3. You never laid that one down. Boy, that bishop takes h3 was ridiculous by uh, yeah, Bogar earlier. Bogar in the D6. very first game against Hans. Let's take the pawn, I think. It's again one of those type of games where Alexeyenko might not even know where it went wrong because it's not one move. It's not mm -hmm. a one move blunder. It's just been a tough position, even if it was slightly better, only slightly better for white. But Jeffrey kept improving his position and Black couldn't really do the same. Now we have Queen to F7. I am very tempted to take this pawn, but I don't know if good follow up yet. So oh, don't take the pawn then. So maybe we do something else. Queen C7, just go back, hit the rook, and knight D6 could be coming in. I can also take another pawn. Queen C5 or Bishop C5. I have lots of lots of moves here. So many good options that Jeffrey's spending time to decide which one is the right one, which Big one is fan the best. Of that. Big fan of that. Absolutely. He needs to be using his time. I think that's a uh, huge. You got to use your time, guys, and he's using it at the right moment. It's a big time advantage and also a huge advantage on the board. Decisive advantage. He just needs to make sure that he plays it out precisely. He doesn't hang anything and plays the correct moves from here, which is what necessarily. Let me see what the inches says. The most precise. Wow. Oh yeah, queen c seven. I did mention that. Queen b six and e takes f five. And uh, yeah, he found one of them. Yeah, well, the idea is like putting the knight in here, I think. Hmm. The pawn is still hanging. Knight d6 is a, now a new threat. It just feels like there's way too many things going wrong in Black's camp. Knight d6, there it is. Queen f6, queen takes c5. Yeah, we don't want to stay in the pin, so maybe something taking c5. There's no checkmates, right? Oh, you know what? Is he threatening mate? No, he's not. It's, it's Which scary because, like, if pawn at? takes, I was looking at like, you know, the queen and rook being lined up. You have to watch out for this, obviously, especially with the yeah. bishop defending h three. There's like sacrifices, but there there wasn't. We were able to cover mm -hmm. everything due to the bishop and the rook. It looks scary, but looks are uh, deceiving here, as you see. Pawn mm -hmm. takes and pawn takes back should be just fine. Knight takes. You do allow another knight in there. Maybe just trade the queens too, though. He's coming. He's coming. Queen g5. I'm not really threatening uh, this yet. He has yeah. to take on f5. Oh. What? <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. Immediately played oh. queen and sacrifice. Man. Queen takes it at 97 and he comes back and thank you. Appreciate it. Give me the work on the way out. This and everything must go, Sale. So I appreciate it. Wow. Jeffrey didn't even everything blink. It looked Get like Kirill had something, a threat at least, against the White King. And here nasty. goes Queen takes G6 finishing Very the game nasty. in finishing. style. 97, Knight takes G6, take the Rook. Come on, now that's a resignation. There it is. And Jeff, Chef Jeff cooking up another nasty one. Oh my he goodness, this again. man is a precise chef here. Very, Very nasty. precise. And once again, it feels like he dominated the game. It wasn't the same home prep as in the previous match where it felt like he won out of 
uh, the opening preparation. He had to work through the advantage he gathered from the opening, but he had that advantage and kept simply increasing that advantage. It it was a master class. That's what many of you said in the chat, and I agree. It felt like he is much higher rated than his opponent when, in fact, these were two super grandmasters. Absolutely. But somehow he makes it look easy. It James, how does he right. do it? You know, he spent a lot of time in the kitchen cooking up what he does right now, right? He does it, and he's been doing it for a while with a smile. As you see, this man is working it, going to the final, and he's about to face Hans. I mean, Hans on, a, on another level right now, and Chef Jeff is on another level right now. This is going to be a a uh, masterpiece what we're gonna see here in this final i don't know what's gonna happen but uh we're gonna be back to see that right it's gonna be fun so we're gonna take a very quick break i, I wasn't sure <laughs> if yeah. I, I should take over but we will <laughs> take a quick break before the storm is here this is it the final match between Jeffrey Zhang and Hans Niemann. Hans will have the white pieces in the first game since he won yesterday the Swiss format. He is the number one seed. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. You will not want to miss this. Wow, that's a fork. There goes my queen. My opponent is eating well tonight with a fork. No knife, no spoon, one fork is enough. Oh no, not my queen. Oh, not the queen, no. I left it hanging. Oh, just plain hanging, hanging out to dry. Well, that's great. I'll discover check to win my queen. Spend the whole day playing Blitz. And what do I have to show for it? Negative 50 Elo. And the discovery here is I'm bad at chess. Oh, come on! There's no way a 1200 is finding that move. He's cheating. He's gotta be cheating. Oh dear. Seems as though I've planted my queen. I've planted myself, as it were. I've been pinned. Pinned to the king. Say, Lizzie, I wouldn't mind being pinned to a king again. Is that too much to say? Oh, you devil. Okay, so a beginner player might think I have blundered my queen here. But actually, my opponent is just getting mated on the next turn. If he takes here or here, he's getting mated. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, I, I didn't realize that you can't play a8. Six. Rook d2 or rook b2, mm -hmm. and then you just take the pawn on b4. King. Oh, king of six, rook b4, bishop e7. Only chance. If you go rook six, b4, bishop e7. But then rook b8, and then black gives up an exchange, and he's got chances. Why does he four seconds? How does he Oh, win? my, he doesn't know what to do. Bishop e7. There are chances. Takes, take e7. Oh, take play rook e7. b1. Play rook b1. If you play rook b1, oh, he rook oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That didn't just happen. Oh! Oh my god! I've never seen anything like this in my life. Oh, and he's he is just destroyed emotionally right now. Oh my god! How? What in the world? I didn't even see the mate. Me neither. Yeah, this is not what you want. Rook B5. You have to play like this. Could this be a draw? <laughs> it should be, but I'm worried. Even but, if 5 is ahead in the clock, I'm worried for his time. Yeah, but if you might play Rook takes C5 at some point. Oh! oh! <laughs> what an <Sorry>. idea! <laughs> okay, but it actually helps Black but out. But it's not you. It's not the a file. Now Black's got activity. No, it's going to backfire for Fabi. Knight takes A4. 
Welcome back, everyone, to the broadcast of the Rapid Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. I'm Anna Rudolph, and I'm thrilled to be here. I have been here for a while, but I'm thrilled. I'm still thrilled, and I will be thrilled for hosting today's show with GM Kanti. James, what is it that this final, the final match for all the marbles, will bring to our viewers? Please Look, y'all have us. to realize, we got Hans here. Hans is tearing it up right now. We took down Ikaru, just snapping. You don't know what you're going to get from Hans. And then you got Chef Jeff, who is a specialist in cooking of everything <laughs> and everyone in front of him. So this is going to be a huge matchup. I don't know who's the favorite. It is hard to tell because both of them indeed have made it to the final by eliminating opponents that are not easy to crush at all. And yet they made it look simple. Jeffrey's preparation has been incredible. Hans had to knock out Hikaru to get here. So I, I I can't even decide which one is more impressive, but both of them have been very convincing. But this is the final match in a knockout system, and only one winner can stand at the very end. In fact, right now, uh, as we see something very solid, Queen's Gambit declines, as we've seen from Jeffrey before. Let's see how he plays it. This is a knight of three line. And this one is a very solid position. As you'll see later on, it can be sharp. But at the beginning, it's very uh, solid, as we know. Queen's Gambit decline being a very well-trusted sound opening for white and black, actually. So we'll see what happens. This is the first game that Jeffrey plays with the black pieces. He had two, two white games uh, on his way here because he didn't need a single tiebreaker while Hans had to play a couple of more games. I, I don't even know which one helps more here, that Hans had to play a couple of tiebreakers, more games in, you know, more practice. Um, while for Jeffrey, it was smooth sailing. He won both of his matches in the first game with the white pieces. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, feeling great there. Hans is feeling good too as well. Confident, comfortable, right? And of course, uh, these guys are a force to be reckoned with on both sides. We don't know really. I don't know who to give it to. I don't know if it's going to be white. I don't know if it's going to be black. I mean, Hans upset Hikaru there. And Jeffrey had two very commanding performances there. I mean, trying to make it a, a third as well. So... We will see. I mean, of course, right now, nothing to really say about this position. Engine likes white just a little bit better, I think, because of the space and maybe, you know, half open C file. But other than that, very level. Pieces are developed. Yeah, and this bishop f4, slightly strange move uh, to retreat the bishop without the bishop uh, having been attacked. But he simply wanted to uh, reach what we see now on the board, that the dark squared bishop can be traded before black was going to be able to play queen to c7 and prevent it. And afterwards, of course, after recastles, we see uh, we got a very solid position from both sides here. You see stuff like knight to b6 and c4. You also have b5. I remember the queen a lot of times goes to e7, knight e8, d6. And the knights get very scary on the c4 and e4 squares. b4 being a move for the minority attack, b4, a4. Yeah, is drinking very vodka typical. allowed? Chat says is drinking vodka allowed. Yeah, exactly. I thought the same thing. And I'm like, huh, is he not even 21? So... We need to make sure we check what's in that water bottle over there, buddy. It seems to be a gigantic water bottle, but I'm wondering, is it still the same water bottle? Because he's continuously chugging that water, and this is already <laughs> his third match. <laughs> chugging a lot of water there, or is it water? Chad? Or <laughs> it's is gotta it? gotta be water. Gotta be water. Gotta be water. Gotta be water, right, Chad? Gotta be. Okay, A3, A5, A3, and B4. Very typical, as we have mentioned, the minority attack. And the question is how Jeffrey will deal with it. Um, what is it that he can do in terms of if you cannot prevent it, how do you prepare for the upcoming position with B4? I like the Queen E7 route. He does probably going to go for 98, 96. Very possible. You do this, you see this a lot in the Queen's Gambit decline, even B5 as well in Knight B6, Knight C4. I've seen this. Kramnik has some excellent games like this. Geary as well with uh, extremely good games in the Queen's Gambit decline, showing the positional masterpiece and what can actually happen. Sometimes even attacking on the king side, you'll see with the old, what was that, old Petrosian game like that. It's a crazy game. G5, H5, never would see, never thought you'd see that Queen's Gambit decline. It's a very flexible opening, as you know. Very solid. Yeah. Flexibility involved. 
and and I think we will take that one point away from Hans that we have given him in advance. I think that's just from the previous card that it stayed <laughs> next to his name. He has not won against Jeffrey. This is their first and only game because every match is one and only one game. That's it. Only one game. So you better bring your best. And if you draw, then we go to another format where it's only one game. So even then, you better bring your best. Very solid setup of the B6. Uh, the uh, the boss dub, as the Grandmaster Peter Spittler likes to call it. <laughs> I don't think it, it was created by Peter, the, the term, but he, he has said it so many times that I always think of Peter when, <laughs> when I see this pawn structure. <laughs> That's good. Now you understand the pawn structure. That's very good. Whatever it helps make you understand the pawn structure is awesome. B5 is a threat, I think. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I could sack both. And you put the knight on F8. Now you have four pieces. I'm not a fan. It's almost there, though, because of the idea of obviously the bishop taking away the square. There's knight F8 to defend. Let me check. Interesting. A takes B4. So this is exactly what white aims for, opening up the queen side further. You see how the semi-open c5 puts pressure on the c6 pawn. The knight from a4 is pressuring the b6 pawn. At the same time, it's a very solid structure for black. If so far, everything is well protected. And the question will be, does Jeffrey have any active plans? Can he try to, for instance, double rooks on the a file? Or will that be an issue that the c6 pawn will remain a bit Vulnerable if you move the C8 rook away. What can be some of his plans? You know, here, this is actually, uh, I do remember from studying games that, of course, playing B5 at some point, but maybe knight E8, B5, well, sorry, knight E8, knight D6, B5. Once knight C5 happens, you dance around the knight. Yeah. And you play knight to B6, and then you put the knight on C4. So we deal with this. We also put uh, the other knight, sometimes, say, if he captures it, you take it, and then you put the other knight from D6 onto B5. So this is a plan. Uh, let's see what the engine thinks. And the thing's plan is knight e4. Wow, knight oh. e4. That is a very strong move because you can't take twice due to the knight hanging. So yeah, that's the a very strong overloaded. move. But I think it's the same idea of putting it around this way. Another move is queen f8, not ever playing in my life. B5 played. Wait, B5 he played. plays it immediately. And Hans was slightly surprised wow. that water bottle almost fell out of his right. hands. It looked <laughs> like. Wait, what? You're going to give me the square, but it actually is very possible. If you take with a piece there, knight d7 to b6 to c4 is possible. But now, this is not a problem anymore. But the knight has a very nice home on d4. Yeah, it is. It is understandable why Hans was slightly surprised that Jeffrey immediately went for b5, when there were ways, as you mentioned, to maneuver the knight first toward d6 and then push once you are ready to get the c4 square. Absolutely, and yeah, the c4 square is uh, now under wraps for black. It looks like you can't even get here though. Like, how do we get a knight here now? Yeah, you now have we to can't. Go you have to abandon five, but uh, that yeah, is yeah. hard. Wow, don't take a few moves there. Uh, I like Hans's position. I can't lie, Chef Jeff is not looking the greatest here in this position. Pieces don't look the best, but of course, I mean, this is not over, and also a draw will give them another game if he's able mm -hmm. to draw. We never know what happens, so let's see. A lot of time left here for both both players. It can be two. Yeah. So Jeffrey's mainly focusing on doubling the rooks on the A file and putting pressure on the B4 pawn. But I agree with you that this this B5 felt a bit too early. Felt a, felt like it gets too passive for black structure with the C6 pawn constantly being a really vulnerable uh, base of the pawn chain. You have to always have a one piece at least guarding it. Yeah, you have to stay with something uh, passive as this knight is stuck here on d4. Very, very stuck here. But, yeah, what do you even do? I mean, look at Jeffrey down on time, too. Remember, he was playing quickly, and now he is definitely thinking as he needs to use his time. Wow. Maybe doubling the rooks? It doesn't do anything, really, besides just make a threat here. Like, I just kind of bounce, bounce around it. This is very tough for Jeffrey. Let's see what he comes up with. Very tough position. Let's see how he looks. He definitely looks a little uh, stressed. We can see a little stress on his face there. Not as confident, definitely. Like, uh, put a hand on the head there. Yeah. You see a sigh, probably, like, 
deep breath there plays 98 but this is the wrong time where is he even going remember we talked about this idea before and that's usually to go to d6 but you can't even do that now so rook a8 and the engine is giving us an overwhelming advantage for white you might be able to sack at some point but not now rook takes takes knight takes takes c6 bishop there no good (laughs) good. almost (laughs) no good no good c6 rick takes b4 is in there no good Um, so slightly surprised on what line jeffrey wanted after b5 what is it that he missed because it feels like this was very straightforward and it gets black into a worse position very good in fact actually after knight c5 there let me see if the engine just says knight b6 yeah, knight takes c5 is the move. It was the move. And knight b6 actually is a close second, which is uh, usually the idea I was used to seeing in these type of structures where you just dance around the knight. Yes, yeah, annoying, but I'm going to get one yeah. too, which is very annoying there. Uh, but yeah, and after thinking, after letting the engine think, by a hair, only 0. 0.2, knight b6 is better than knight c5. Only by 0. 0.2, it's like 75 and 77. Mm. Like, literally no difference there. Knight d4, and you're supposed to play queen a7 there. Like, so oh, hard so to find. Bishop D7. So a yeah. few inaccuracies, but yeah. none of them was a big mistake. Just right. inaccurate moves. Here we are with the live position. Me to D8. Chef getting cooked. Yeah, it looks like the chef is, uh, I mean, he's not getting cooked, but definitely is not looking good for us. It's not the Oof, greatest. Bishop F5, what a move Wrong to move. undermine My the goodness. defense. Because the queen is now holding onto the bishop and the rook. The bishop needs to be guarding the c6 pawn. So suddenly, uh, suddenly things are about to fall apart here for black. The question is, do we take on a8 first or do we take on f5 first? Yeah, and that's why Hans has paused for a second to to figure out which one is more precise. I think rook a8 is more precise because it keeps the queen off of e5. Mm-hmm. If I go knight takes f5, you trade the rooks, and then we maybe play queen f6. And we might have ourselves an end game that I might be okay in. But wait, there's a 97, and I lose the pawn. Mm. I still like rook takes a8, though, because I like to get my queen to e5, centralize. There it is, and take, right. So now we can play queen e5. Yeah, very active white pieces, and this knight on e8... Uh, unfortunately, it's not contributing much. It would need many moves of maneuvering to place it somewhere much more useful. Absolutely. Chef Jeff running out of ingredients. <laughs> That's a funny one, ingredient. That is pretty funny, but it's not funny for Jeff at all right now as he's trying yeah. to figure out this position. And yeah, Queen A. Oof, that's losing. Is it? Yeah, you can mate it somehow. Yeah, that's definitely right. I was looking at Queen A4. And then queen e5, but then king f8, but then check. And you just lose on the spot. Just lose on the spot there. So, yeah. Very Let's... tough position for Jeffrey. He's also down on time, but he's determined. He's trying to find the best, most resilient way to continue. Wow. Very strong chest from Hans here. King h7. Plus three advantage. The question is, where do we go first? Maybe just queen e5 first. Exactly. Seems Centralize. Very strong. Mm-hmm. Same move we was going to do. Now, hmm. g4, that's too aggressive. My idea is knight takes h6. Um, ooh, knight d4, very simple. You don't have to go too aggressive here and attack this pawn and take this pawn. Wow. Well, I just got we just got word here that Jeffrey had a similar run last week, losing to Alexi Serrano in the finals. So it's just, hard. Chess is hard, uh, apparently. Even if Jeffrey has been crushing his super grandmaster opponents in the previous two matches, in this game against Hans, unfortunately, he he didn't find the right moment for that B5 push. And that was the start of this really unpleasant position. Apparently, when he makes it to the finals, it's something for him as well. The finals is just a uh, something to it. He needs to break the curse there. As a uh, here, he could definitely on the losing end of the sing game and could drop another finals in the row. Yeah, and uh, we also 
have received the information. There have been so many weekends, but last weekend especially um, was a good one for Jeffrey, not for the finals, but for beating Hans. So they already had faced each other oh, last weekend at okay. an earlier stage in the semis. Wow. And so now this is a finals. revenge. Hans yeah. is like, nah, you're not about to get me this time, chef. I know exactly what you're working with this time. He was ready for him. He got the white pieces. I wonder what that was last week when they played. But interesting game. King H2, nice little prophylactic move. It's a, Black's almost like in Zugzwang, in a way. Um, of course, if knight takes f2, there's queen f5 check. If you go queen b7, I might have queen to e8. With the idea of knight takes c6 and knight e7, especially if you take on f2. So mm -hmm. there's a very nice mating ideas here for white with queen e8 if the queen moves. And if you don't defend the pawn, then obviously I take the pawn with the same ideas that could be there on checkmating. So we will see. This seems to be a tough one. And uh, they, they do have the game now with colors reversed since uh, last week's one was Jeffrey with the white pieces. It seems so. A revenge by Hans. Uh, he got now the white pieces and also the better position. So much pressure on Jeffrey in terms of what's on the board. It's decisive advantage for white and also much more time. Time is now looking good for Chef Jeff here as Hans is trying to close out this final, taking down and upsetting Hikaru, and now trying to take out the very mean Chef Jeff. Been on a tear here. Let's mm -hmm. see if Hans can close it out. What will Jeff do to try to keep the hope alive, to try to put some more resistance up Yeah, the time's just ticking. It's three minutes. Three minutes. I only have a minute. I'll do that now. Yeah. Oh, this is rough, but it's what it is. And the colors, they earn the right to, to how many times they're going to play with the white pieces, depending on how well they did in the Swiss tournament of the day before. So it was Hans Niemann who, who won yesterday the tournament ahead of Jeffrey, ahead of Hikaru. And as the top seed, he gets the white color in every match. And as we see F6, first off, again, Fango tells you not to do it. Immediately, the engine went up like plus three after F6. And of course, this is game over. As you see, the engine is like plus six. Queen C7 was very <laughs> nice with a move like maybe knight to E6 or F5. Oh or just taking the pawn with yeah. queen takes C6 and then queen takes D5. 96, beautiful move, threatening checkmate, only move is queen G, where well, you have queen H8. And then he takes the pawn, and now D5 is hanging under a minute for Jeffrey here. And I think it's starting to sink in that he's realizing, bro, I'm about to lose another finals in a row. This hurts. It's a lot of emotion here at this time. This is certainly a rough one for Jeffrey, but what a tournament this is being for Hans. Uh, it's still possible to mess it up, but already very, very, very unlikely. You pretty much need to hang your piece uh, at this rate. It, it needs to be a mouse slip uh, if Hans messes this up. Right, a huge mouse slip, which would uh, be devastating. He's trying. So 93 attacks the b4 pawn, trying to come back also taken. toward e5. And then check, and then knight f4. g5, knight g6, king g7, knight e7, queen f7. I take the knight. I mean, it's not clear yet. Obviously, all the arrows, it's not clear yet. I, mean, I think I can just take this, though, to be honest. Yeah, because he's going to take this regardless. So he yes. probably take, and then knight takes, and maybe check. See what he does afterwards. Knight f4, g5, knight check, king g7, knight e7, queen f7, knight f5 check, king g6, knight d6, and king h6. You would have played out on the king board, H8, James. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing your best Hikaru impression here. <laughs> there it is, right? Oh, yeah. There it is. Check, check, I mean, check him here in knight f4 to do it. Knight f4. Yeah. yeah, and he's not interested in trading his knight with queen takes b4, um, but knight f4 that. seems to be the better move for sure. Knight f4, queen c4, actually. 
check, can you seven check, can you there? I mean, he's still in the game somehow. Oh, yeah, good? it's still not a knockout. He's still in the game. Knight f4, knight g6, king there. Oh, no, check there. Knight f8, knight e6, and it's still nothing. Oh, my goodness. Like, <laughs> you have him, but you don't have him. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's still not the end. It's still not fully over. Uh, engine said, I hadn't turned the engine on. I'm like, what is it? So it's, it is knight f4. But then after queen e4, you had to go queen e7. That's a crazy move. Like, I'm not finding that. That queen e7 was ridiculous, to be honest. Yeah. c6 instead is um, what's on the board. Seems to be very strong, too, obviously, to just push the pass pawn. Jeffrey's down to 12 seconds. Mm, takes Jeff, the Jeff pawn. Go down. And it looks so like he big gives Hans. up his knight, so indeed. So queen c4 and just stay around it. Stay around the knight. Stay around the pond. Oh, there's a check and he pushes. Ooh, gotta be careful oh. there. Jeffrey oh. with the tricks. Bro, that could have been crazy. Queen takes, he takes the knight, and Jeffrey puts up a fight. He does not go down. Yeah. He could he not come not back with the knight to d4 or c5. He chooses f4. f4. Yeah, he's going f4. Going f4. Check and queen d3, get him off the board. As a resi, you can resign there almost. There it is. Take, take. Yeah, bring and the, the knight around. is guarding the b2 square. All that Hans needs is to bring his king in to Chef, Jeff. Last few moves. This has been such an incredible fight that Jeffrey is putting up, though. It felt like his position was lost already so long ago and he kept fighting he kept putting up resistance and yes it is lost this end game but he tried and he gave hans many opportunities to make a mistake too absolutely and hans here just being having nerves of steel winning even the first round where he dropped a rook but got him back anyway still yes. calm and collected there and able to take out chef jeff here who is a very, very strong force to be reckoned with this week, as uh, this is going to be an easy one. There it is. Hans with the and win. it's official. Hans Niemann. After winning yesterday's Swiss tournament of the Rapid Chess Championship, he also wins today, knocking out Hikaru Nakamura in the semis and beating Jeffrey Zhang. The, the, the Jeffrey Zhang that has been crushing Super Grandmasters until now, when Hans stopped him and right. claims it all. He wins today's Rapid Chess Championship. James, what are your thoughts on Hans's performance? Uh, Hans is absolutely working. I mean, the work shows, right? When you put in the work, the work is eventually going to show. He spends so much time working on his game. A uh, huge improvement in the last two years here of what he's been doing. And he's just everywhere. He's approaching 2,700 land now, right? He's working and working and working and is showing, right? So uh, congratulations to him. And also congratulations to all the players, definitely Chef Jeff, as well as he definitely put on a commanding performance, but Hans was just a Very. better player today. Yeah, in this game, for sure. We will take a quick break, but just to set up the interview with the winner of today's Rapid Chess Championship, we will be right back with Hans Niemann joining us for an interview. Don't go anywhere to listen to Hans.
and we are joined by the man who won it all today. Congratulations to Hans Niemann. Hans, welcome to the show. And uh, first comes first. You were teasing us that you are in some undisclosed location. And the, the, you you got to spill the beans. Give us a clue. And congratulations again. Uh, well, you know, I just, uh, let's just I think the, the secret uh, sauce to the last three RCC performances is uh, swimming and the sauna right before the game. So Ooh, okay. I have access, oh. have access to some some high quality Eastern European facilities. Mm. So high uh, you quality know, quality Eastern European. Yeah, facilities. so some very hot saunas and a lot of a lot of swimming. Um, and I think uh, that's been the routine. Combined with some very spicy Korean food, and I've 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 kept that routine for the last three weeks, and I've made the knockout every single time. Very nice. That's the secret. There you go. It's a secret. Chat, what's the take food notes? choice? We need to. What's the food? So we get that in. in, in it's in it's called the chicken. The chicken gangjun. Chicken. Okay. We Ray, there's like one Korean restaurant in Belgrade. It's called Ami. Ami. In Belgrade, you yes, said. In Belgrade. Yes, in yes, Belgrade. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So that's your training location. Interesting. Right, cool. Let me write it down. Type it up. <laughs> you guys got to come to Belgrade, and you have yeah. to eat Korean food and go to the sauna. And that's it. And swim. Perfect. Elo. You just, it's the perfect plus five. mind body balance. Wow. It seems to work for you. Tell us about what it was like, first of all, to win the Swiss format yesterday. And by eliminating, for instance, Jan Nepomniash's chances in the penultimate round. And today you had to make your way to the finals through knocking out Hikaru Nakamura. So tell us about your feelings and thoughts on on what it was like to to play some of the strongest grandmasters in the world and and crushing them well uh certainly uh i uh, i'm gaining a bit more experience in these knockouts and being the one seed certainly made me appreciate the white pieces because i think it's it's uh at first i was like oh this one to eight thing is just stupid there should be like some you know there should be prize money or something but once i like was number one seed and I was having, I was white every single game. I started to realize, um, like, uh, it's just, it's just an, it's just a huge advantage. And uh, so obviously that was nice to have white. And uh, yeah, the, the Swiss went well, but uh, I, I, in the last three weeks, I've made the knockout. So it seems like I figured it out. But for a long time, I would just play the RCC and just do absolutely terribly because the time control was just so foreign to me. Uh, I just, it just took me so long to adjust to the 10 plus those like it's just it's the time control is just so weird I, i've never played anything like it so i guess uh, and also the la the previous times i was playing the rcc i'd be like it'd be like during a tournament or i had no rest so obviously it's nice to, to beat a uh, uh hikaru and jeffrey um especially after jeffrey beat me uh last week so it's obviously nice, but, uh, you know, it's just a normal Sunday. It's a normal day in the office. <laughs> exactly. Right. That I wish my game, normal right? day in the office looked like this. Uh, <laughs> James, I, I let you take over and yeah, ask that, Hans that, about the next question. Bro, that Vukar game, right? We would we mentioned it when, uh, when you dropped the Rook, but you stayed very calm, actually, and played King D4. Then he blundered it back, almost as if you knew it was coming. It was actually a turning point. I thought that was pretty cool to see. Your thoughts on that real quick. Yeah, that was just a 5,000 rated puzzle rush right there. <laughs> so, exactly. that just, that's going to go into the survival. Right. And that's going to be like number 200. And if you want to solve it, you got to study my games. That's right. That's exactly right, bro. See, that, that's what I wanted to hear right there. That's exactly right. As we go into our uh, Coinbase Rapid Recap here. And we look into uh, this this game with Hikaru. So this D four game, this was uh, nasty. I think that. that when oh, did you will spot we, this? Will we keep Hans for the the recap? I just had one last question because so many viewers asked Hans. Sorry, James. I, oh, I need go to ahead. Ask. Absolutely, we got to. I, I need ask to it. ask. Um, you've been drinking huh. from a big bottle, which looked <laughs> like a big bottle of mineral water. So we just wanted to confirm that you have been drinking water. Do they right? think it was vodka or something? Oh, not me. I'm just. I mean, well, I'm in, just, I'm in uh, Eastern Europe, so I that's mean, usually. You know, it's usually I mean, the Eastern European style is usually to just chug some vodka, but. Yeah, I'm from I mean, Hungary, no. so yeah. <laughs> no, no, I can I can show you. It's we can it's it's it's, it's mineral water. It's I drink water, uh, copious amounts of water. I actually ran out, so I went down to like the 
the hotel bar and just oh. uh, got some more. So yeah, yeah. no, I think I, I went, I drink a lot of water. I find hydration to be important. And right. uh, I take, I take the, the, um, uh, my health very seriously. Very good. Well, we are taking travel? further notes, Korean food, lots of water, sauna, swimming, um, taking it easy but also this chill mode seems like yeah, it no social you... media as well um no social media yeah 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 you guys should uh should all block social media it's just yeah. my advice to chess players yeah just oh. ig i just just so there's an extension you can download to block websites i oh. recommend yeah yeah so that's that's that that as well just trying to give advice to my you know you guys should all delete twitch it's bad for your life <laughs> oh, oh 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 cool <laughs> here goes chat. our careers <laughs> Thank well, after I deleted so Twitch, I gained 200 points, so I guess that speaks for itself. Right. Well, Easy. we lost you as a as a streamer and a Puck Champs coach. Well, we did win you as a very strong Grandmaster. We wish you the very best for your future events, Hans, and we hope to see you, if not next week at the Rapid Chess Championship, but at future events of chess.com and also on-site events, of course. Yeah, thank you. Congrats, bro. That has been so insightful, Hans's tips about the the balance that he has achieved with his undisclosed, but now we know, Belgrade location. Um, he has been killing it in the Rapid Chess Championship all these past weekends. And we're going to take a look at one of his games as our Coinbase Rapid Recap of the day. James, which game of the many, many great games of today have you chosen for the Rapid Recap? This is the one where, uh, in fact, this was a huge turning point here, the uh, huge game where Hikaru actually after 96, with, with Hikaru after 96, Queen B4 runs into all kind of issues with the Queen being uh, loose and, and exposed here. So after Queen B4, Han spots it, D4, we're trying to highlight the fact that if I can do Rook takes D1, you're done, right, immediately. So after pawn takes pawn, he spots it. It's not knight f4. It's knight takes d4 with the deadly threats of if I move this knight anywhere to check you, you're going to lose the queen after rook takes d1. In fact, in this position right now, you actually have to do rook takes d4. In fact, an engine says bishop d3. I don't even believe that that's a move. Uh, but I guess it is because of stopping rook takes d1, which is the threat. Once again, bishop d3, you have um, queen c4 and rook takes d4. Nothing else is going to do anything for you. He plays bishop g4 and loses on the spot because, again, the check, the tactic, could have been done on e2 or f3. But knight f3 check was played, and uh, Hikaru resigns on the spot because after bishop takes f3, anything takes f3. Rook takes d1, and you are done. And taking with any piece, any of these three pieces, is game over. Rook takes, queen takes the queen, and that's it. And he resigns literally on the spot. Knight f3 ends the game, and Hans was able to go to the finals and win today. It was an incredible game. And if we just rewind that moment where the queen of Hikaru went to b4, it seems like such a natural move. You know, knight e6 attacks the queen. You need to pick a square for it. Queen b4 seems very, very much a promising move because you create a pin through the a3 f8 diagonal. But that pin is the one that was basically the key pattern in this tactical sequence. It's the queen on before that will end up being hanging after the many, many combinations that you have showed, James. And d4, knight takes d4, there is no stopping any of these patterns. Uh, and if, in case of rook takes d4, there was going to be a queen g5 pattern in one of the other lines. Oh, yeah, this one If here, we also actually, showed that yeah, one. Yeah, that one is cool too. If rook takes d4, queen g5 incredible threatening checkmate on g2 and also threatening the rook on c1 so in both lines the pattern um either with the mate threat on g2 and the hanging rook on c1 or the hanging queen on b4 in the other line there were way too many tactical patterns and uh, the attack of hans was unstoppable hikaru had to resign a few moves later and eventually in the finals uh, hans also beat jeffrey jong he is the winner of our rapid chess championship of today and this has been your coinbase rapid recap congratulations to hans again 100 percent congrats to hans man i think that was great it's uh amazing to see players like him just to make it through and actually upset even uh somebody as big as hikaru right so i was pretty awesome i think and he moves he moves into next week you know he won't be here next week he said but uh he's feeling good right 
he's feeling good for sure. And so far, our standings, the overall standings of the Rapid Chess Championship Grand Prix points, we can see Hikaru with a massive lead. Of course, he's going to be the one that takes that first spot. But we actually need to focus on not just the first, but the top 12. The top 12 of the field after next weekend, which will be the last weekend of the Rapid Chess Championship, will make it to the finals that will take place on August the 18th. So we are almost there. Next week is the last week to qualify. There will be 12 players that qualify with Grand Prix points and four players that are invited as wild cards. I wonder who will be those invites. Mm -hmm. I would guess some top 10 players in the field there. Right, some candidates, stars, probably some my few to play in the candidates. Of course, you'll see. But we will we'll see when that time comes, guys. It's going to be awesome. Indeed, and we shall also see what happens with the Grand Prix point situation, the, the current standings of the top 12. It can still change, especially the bottom spots. They're up for grab depending on how the players will finish next weekend, which will be the last chance to qualify. We want to thank all of you for tuning in on all the different platforms where we are streaming the Rapid Chess Championships presented by Coinbase. Huge thanks to the team of chess.com and to my wonderful co-host, James. This was so much fun. This was awesome, Anna. All right, this is our first time commentating here, and but we've always seen each other through the stream world and raids and stuff like that. It was awesome. And uh, you guys were awesome too, chat. Love all of you watching. You keep us going. The energy from the chat is contagious. I think it was uh, uh, much, much love there as always. So, and it was a great day, wasn't it? It has been an amazing day, especially for Hans when it comes to the players and yeah. for the rest of us viewers and spectators, because uh, there have been so many incredible games today. Next weekend, the final Rapid Chess Championship before the overall finals on August the 18th. Mark your calendar because you will not want to miss this. See you soon again next weekend.